Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Planning and Development Management Committee. My name is Aidan Williams. I'm the chair of the committee. Also on this call will be Ben Hartley, who serves as the vice chair, senior officers from our legal planning and democratic services division at the council, officers from the highways authority, and the members who make up the Planning and Development Management Committee. Just before we begin, I'd just like to read a short uh, statement outlining the webcasting um, process for this evening. Um, for your information, this meeting is being live streamed and recorded, so please mute your microphones to minimize background noise. If you wish to speak on an item, please use the chat facility to notify me and then wait until I invite you to speak. Before making your comments, please state your name. Um, now turning to the business. Uh, agenda item one is to note attendances. Councillor Carey has submitted apologies and I understand that Councillor Holden is substituting in his place. Councillor Hartley and Councillor Dr Barclay have notified that they are running late for the committee meeting but they are hoping to join us later on and um, I understand that Councillor Stennett has not submitted apologies and is not presently on the call but hopefully he will be joining us. Um, agenda item number two is to note membership of the committee. I take it that is noted. And agenda item three is the appointment of the subcommittee, and that is the subcommittee for the town village green uh, subcommittee, typically compromising the chair, vice chair, and opposition spokesperson or their nominees. Um, can I take it that that's approved? Yeah. Okay. Uh, agenda item number four is to note terms of reference for the committee. And similarly, agenda item five is to note the meeting dates. Turning to agenda item number six, uh, declarations of interest. Are there any members wishing at this point to declare an interest? Uh, I do, Chair. Um, last item on the uh, application to develop 42 Church Road. I um, called this in and I'll be speaking against the officer recommendation. So I will not participate in the committee discussion and I won't be voting. Thank you. C Councillor Holden, can I ask, is that also the yes. case for yourself? Similar, absolutely the same situation, but with five pine wood in my, uh, in my ward. Thank you, Councillor. Um, agenda item number seven is minutes of the previous meeting. Um, that's really move. happy to move them. I'm happy to move, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, can we confirm if those are approved? No objections. Okay, fantastic. Uh, agenda item seven, uh, uh, agenda item eight is questions from the mem from members of the public. I understand that we have not received any um, questions prior to the meeting. And then agenda item nine, additional information report. That should have been circulated. Well, it has been circulated by email to members. We trust that you've all received that. Um, we can now proceed on to the business of the meeting, determining the applications. The first application that is going to be considered is 14 Plain Tree Road, which is on page 76 of your agenda pack. Um, before we turn to the discussion or representations, if we're going to receive a short officer introduction from Ms. Milner, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I hope you can all hear me. Um, I'm just going to share my screen so you can see the, the presentation. And you will see the PDF. Yes. And can you see my cursor? Well, I move the cursor, just in case I yeah. wish to refer to. Thank you. So the application, first application before members this evening relates to 14 Plain Tree Road, known as Cassell. The site comprises a two-story detached residential property located on, located on the south side of Plain Tree Road in the South Hale Conservation Area. The property was constructed in the 1930s and has since been extended to the side along with um, a double garage to the front, which you can see here. The site features a front garden, front driveway, rear patio and garden, and following water damage is currently um, unoccupied, waiting refurbishment. Neighbouring properties are entirely residential and are bordered by hedges and some trees to the rear. The site, um, as well as being within the South Hale Conservation Area, is adjacent to grade two listed buildings to the rear 
um, namely 119 and 121 Park Road, both of which are Edgar Wood properties dating from the early 20th century. There are other listed buildings within the vicinity, but these two um, adjoin the, the rear property boundary. Um, the application property is not identified as being a positive contributor within the conservation area. This is the existing floor plan of the property. And then I move on to the proposal. The application seeks planning permission for the remodeling of the existing properties with extensions and alterations to the form and appearance. This includes the demolition of these existing garages and chimney stack and the erection of a part single, part two story front extension, single story rear extensions with alterations to the roof shape to include an in increase in the side roof height. There would be one front and two rear dormers along with a roof light to accommodate the loft conversion. There would also be a new chimney with placement windows, a rear Juliet balcony and front and rear ba basement um, light wells. Objections have been received. Um, so this, this is the, the full plans. Objections have been received from four neighboring properties, citing concerns over overdevelopment of the site, scale and design of the, of the proposal, the impact on their amenity, particularly from overlooking and sense of it being overbearing, and an impact on the listed buildings. We've also received representation from councillors Young and Mitchell in support of the local residents objecting to the proposal and also from the Edgar Wood Society um, objecting to the proposal and voicing concerns not only to the impact on the adjacent listed buildings but the conservation area as a whole and also laying out their assessment of the application property. So the key things to consider are the impact and the upon the character and significance of the conservation area and the listed buildings and their setting, the design and appearance of the proposal, the impact on neighboring amenity, trees and ecology. Officers do acknowledge this is a, a, a large change to the existing property. However, the value we place on the existing property does not align with that of the local residents or the Edgar Wood society, we consider that the extensions to the property and alterations have um, reduced its value that it plays to the conservation area and that consider that although the extensions to the property would change the form and appearance, that they would improve the aesthetic value within the street scene. Um, we have taken on board the concerns of the society and, and local residents and amendments to the scheme have been sought. In regards to the additional information report, I would note that we have proposed to amend the materials condition to insist that samples are provided of all materials along with specifications and also requested further architectural detailing um, section drawings at a larger scale to ensure that the dormers that are proposed on the rear alongside every other feature is of the necessarily necessary quality. We do recognise that there will be a substantial increase on, in the massing and therefore we have cited that there would be a degree of harm to the conservation area as a whole. However, this is classed as less than substantial harm in accordance with the MPPF, being at the less end of the scale of harm. And it's considered that this harm as a result of the massing is outweighed by the increased value that the property could play within the wider conservation area by improvements to the architectural integrity and aesthetics of the property. In regards to the listed buildings, we do not agree with the um, Edgar Wood Society and consider that considering that the change in land levels with the Edgar Wood properties being at a higher level, um, the separation distances between the properties and the scale of the changes to the rear of the property, that the changes to the property would not harm the setting of that listed of those listed buildings. Um, in regards to the impact on amenity, um, these are duly noted and because of that we have proposed conditions and um, obscure glazing windows that look towards number 16 Plain Tree Road and also obscure glazing and fixing shut the dormer closest to Plain Tree Road, number 16 Plain Tree Road. However, overall, um, we do consider that the harm to the conservation area is outweighed by the public benefits of the improvements to the property and therefore it is considered on balance that the proposal is acceptable and accords with policy and subject to the conditions we do recommend approval. 
Thank you, Ms. Um, Milner. I would just note, sorry, just one last point to note on the photographs. Um, there has been some comments about the CGIs that have been submitted, and I think this will be a point that's raised throughout the committee. Any CGIs that are submitted either by objectors or applicants in either support or objection to a scheme um, are CGIs. They are graphical representations. They are not taken as approved documents. Um, there are CGIs with this scheme that aren't on the presentation, but they are available on the website to view, um, should members wish. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Milner. Um, I understand there's three people wishing to speak against the application. Uh, Mr. Mike Williams, Councillor Mitchell, and Councillor Mrs. Young. Uh, has there been any discussion as to who's hoping to speak first? Uh, is, is Mr. Williams on the in the meeting? Yes, I'm, I'm present. Uh, are you happy to... Uh, I will, unless speak. Councillor Young would like to speak first. No, I think you'd better speak first, Mr Williams. Okay, thank uh, you. Just to let you know, Mr Williams, you have three minutes to speak. Um, thank you. You can keep the time. If, if not, we'll just gently uh, request that you wrap up your comments. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Williams. I've been asked to speak on behalf of the four neighbours of the subject property, each side, and two at the rear, together with also representing the Edgar Wood Society. The council has a legal duty to pay special attention to preserving historic houses in the conservation area, as correctly stated in the officer's report. However, the planning department did not demand a significant statement to be submitted with this application as required under the NPPF. Consequently, the historical and architectural significance of the building has, been, has not been assessed and the officer's report is deeply flawed in, this, in its conclusion. This house is in fact of considerable historic and architectural interest. The Edgar Wood Society has established that the house lies within the parcel of land forming the Richardson Estate, which was allocated to, Elikud, was allocated to Edgar Wood to design. Although slightly younger than the neighboring listed buildings, it was more than likely designed by the Edgar Wood architectural practice. This information has not been taken into consideration by the officer. The, pl the plain clean lines of the building reflect the modern style of Edgar Wood and his architectural partner, Henry Sellers. It was a very modern building when it was de designed in 1930 and can often be mistaken for buildings constructed in the 1950s. The author of the Edgar Wood submission is recognized as a leading authority on Edgar Wood's buildings to the extent that the Manchester University and John Ryland's Library published his 12,000 word academic paper on this very subject. Contrary to the officer's report, the building is still in its original form as indicated on the 1936 Ordnance Survey map. It would be a tragedy to destroy this striking house in the interest of an overdevelopment of the roof space involving several second floor dormer windows, unsuitable bifold doors, Juliet balcony, and an excessive rear extension. This building deserves a great deal more sympathetic attention if it is to be altered in any way. Finally, the council did not demand, as the council did not demand a significant statement, and the Edgar Wood report failed to achieve su sufficient consideration in the officer's report. Should the proposal be approved, I feel that the council would not have met its legal duty of paying special attention to preserving the heritage of the, of the conservation area. May I ask that you reject this application on the ground as unsympathetic and overdevelopment and prevent the destruction of a building that can present a far better case for formal listing than rebuilding. Please can you help to ensure that the building is given a chance to survive. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, Councillor Mrs. Young, are you happy to speak next? Yes, thank you for letting me. Please, Councillor, you, you have five minutes to speak, thank you. Yeah, that's fine. 14 Plain Tree Road, as you've seen on the map, is built right up to the boundary of 16 Plain Tree Road and, within, and is within the South Hale Conservation Area. In Hale Central, we are the custodians of part of the South Hale Conservation Area, and we are proud that this area of the road contains the largest cluster of Edgar Wood houses in the United Kingdom. Edgar Wood was born in 1860 and died in 1935. He is credited with having as many as 30 of his buildings 
formally listed as being of architectural interest. And the Edgar Wood Society have told us that there is a possibility that number 14 Plain Tree Road is the last building in Trafford built to his design. We are fortunate in possessing a cluster of some seven of these buildings, all of which are now grade two listed, that were built immediately close to each other. The proposed extensions to 14 Plain Tree Road are exactly up to the boundary of 16 Plain Tree Road, immediately adjacent to these houses. It's our duty to preserve these houses and their environment for the future. And it is as important to protect the outside area of these houses, which were designed following the architectural developments of William Morris's arts and crafts movement, which inspired Edgar Wood, as well as the interiors. Our heritage officer is on record as saying that she's uncomfortable with this proposed development, as it will cause minor harm to the character and appearance of 14 Plain Tree Road and the contribution it makes to the South Hale conservation area as a whole. This overdevelopment of the site will cause more than minor harm to the dwellings immediately adjacent to it. Should this development go ahead, neighbouring houses will be both overlooked and overshadowed by a development which would erode the spacious character and appearance of this important part of the South Hale conservation area. The Heritage Officer has also stated that this harm should be assessed under paragraph 196 of the NPPF, which states that where a development proposal will lead to less than substantial harm to the significance of a designated heritage asset, this harm should be weighed against the public benefits of a proposal including, where appropriate, securing its optimum viable use I don't see any public benefits in, arrive, in allowing this application, only private profit. Allowing this development would destroy the spaciousness aspect of this area completely and be absolutely contrary to the concept of a conservation area. You as members of the planning committee are also custodians of the conservation areas of Trafford and will be answerable to future residents of Trafford. This application will result in overdevelopment of the site, and I would like future resident, residents to be able to thank you for preserving their heritage by refusing inappropriate developments such as this one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mrs. Young. Councillor Mitchell, are, are you with us? Am I? Uh, I uh, uh, actually, uh, having uh, heard both the previous uh, um, speakers, I, I don't think that I can really uh, expand any further, but I do ask the committee to please consider very carefully uh, what has been suggested, because we, we ought to be able to protect our environment. Uh, and this is a prime clay case of uh, actually doing good instead of damaging it. Uh, that was all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Um, speaking in favour of the application is uh, Mr. Michael Tutti. Is Mr. Tutti present? Yes, good evening, Mr. Good evening. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Tutti. You will have three minutes to speak if you want to uh, start your contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak in support of our application. We are a family with young sons at early primary school age that already live within the Trafford area and we purchased 14 Plain Tree Road in early 2018 for this to be our long-term family home. Whilst we could save funds and remodel and refurbish the property, we rented the house out for a short time, but unfortunately, during the tenancy, the property became unoccupied and uninhabitable following a major water leak event in early 2019. The damage was also further escalated through no fault of our own as we were denied access for a long period following the leak and it was required to carry out extensive internal works to mitigate the damage. Given the situation of now having a damaged and uninhabitable empty building and as the property is not a positive contributor 
to the architectural heritage of the area as detailed in the conservation area management plan, we could have sought to demolish the property and replace it with a new build, which many others may have done. Instead, we wish to reuse and retain the majority of the existing house and its original features, while sympathetically refurbishing, remodeling, and adding some additional space. Our planning application journey for the proposed refurbishment and remodeling commenced on the 12th of December, 2019, almost a full year today since we submitted our initial scheme. The, this journey has included the withdrawal of, withdrawal of our initial scheme at the request of the council, a pre-application process where the council provided detailed guide, guidance on how to amend our scheme in accordance with the planning guidelines, a change in planning officers mid-application, and extensive dialogue with these planning officers as well as consultation with the conservation officer. Throughout this process, we have proactively engaged and worked hard with both our architect and the planning officers to respond to all requests made of us to, men to amend our design. The outcome is that we have now jointly reached a proposed scheme which meets the planning guidelines, addresses the various concerns stated in the planning application letter and the conservation officer heritage comments. The proposed scheme is being recommended by the planning officers to grant approval, and we kindly request the committee supports this recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Tutti. Uh, just before we move to the discussion, I think Ms. Coley has indicated she'd like to make, provide some clarification. Not me, Chairman. I think Ms. Uh, no. Ms. Milner wants to. That was me, Chair. Sorry, <laughs> Ms. Milner. Um, just to clarify a couple of points that I think is, is important to, to know, um, an assess a heritage statement was submitted with this application. It's a 23-page document that is on the Council's website. Um, whilst it may come to a different conclusion to, to others objecting, they have um, noted the MPPF and it has been prepared by um, a planner. Um, also, just to point out that the development is not right up to the boundary. It has been set off the boundary of number 16 and is set further away than the existing garages. Um, although still close to the boundary, it is not immediately adjacent to it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Milner. Um, Councillor Cordingly, I think you've indicated you're happy to move in the discussion. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I cycled over to this property yesterday. Um, it's not a particularly impressive property. Um, I've read the report from Edward Wood Society, and at best they point to it a likelihood of it being designed by uh, uh, somebody who we used to work with, Edward Wood, uh, John uh, J. Henry uh, Seller. I don't. I went to the other properties, uh, the, uh, the, the the genuine Edward Wood, and they're of a different class altogether. And I think we're really stretching it here to extend the Edward Edward Wood franchise onto this property. Um, I, I, do, I, do, I, I, I do think planners have taken this very seriously and uh, addressed it. And I think they've given a good report and they've worked with the, uh, the, uh, the homeowner. So I'm happy to propose. I don't think it's one that we want to hold back uh, because of links with somebody who worked with somebody. I'm not, um, I, I'd, I'd much prefer us to give permission for this to be developed and brought back into use. Thank you, Chair, and I'm happy to propose. Thank you, Councillor Cordingly. Um, Councillor Morgan, you've indicated as well. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've come to a bit of a different conclusion than Councillor Cordingly. Um, if this was in any other part of the borough, I, I wouldn't really be probably, I probably wouldn't have really any, any comments on it. Um, it is a substantial development. Um, I think anyone... Um, would argue looking at the plans would say that and i know it's been seen it's been stated it's refurbishment i mean there's a significant rebuild required of this property but it does concern me about it being in the in the heritage conservation in south south Hale conservation area um and i don't want to i mean i i i do not know um um the, the details of, hi of history as much as others, but I'm just—it's just reading on what the heritage officer um, stated that it's 
um, the, the build in, in their view will overdevelop this dwelling and the contribution it makes to the South Hill conservation area. Whilst the existing extension is a poor addition, this shouldn't be taken as an excuse for making matters worse, um, particularly in terms of the roof and the chimney. Um, I mean, Councillor Young stated in terms of it is harm and, and in accordance with the MPPF, it should be therefore weighted in from, against the public benefit. I'm not sure what public benefit is of making such a substantial development. I, I understand that it, that it needs developing, but I'm not sure this has to be the case. Um, I'm, I'm not, if I'm honest, I'm, I'm going to then conclude and say I haven't really decided. I'm quite interested in what other committee members have to say. Um, but it really does concern me about the heritage statement. And uh, it, it, this is a substantial rebuild of the property. And I, 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 I am not the one to judge, but the heritage officer has said it does it impact. It. It's really for the committee members to decide on whether that it's enough um, of, a, of an impact. And I'm currently going to sit on the fence. Um, but um, I do have real concerns on this on this statement. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Winstanley indicated as well. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. This is a tough one. This, but as we said in um, in many of these uh, meetings before, it's all about balance, isn't it? And my instinct is to see if it's something in the conservation area it, it should be conserved. And yet, also when I saw the building. I wasn't impressed by the. It did, didn't stand out as being worthy of conservation, if that makes sense. It wasn't. It wasn't um, a uh, an individual enough building. And then I saw the way the the um, the the planning balance had been reached, and I recognised that the the heritage officer did have some concerns around this, but the planning team judged that the the harm would be less of substantial, and then balanced that against the public benefit. And I also note that the the input from the the owners who have worked very closely with our own planning team to arrive at a design which is acceptable to us, and we must give some weight to the the willingness and of them to accept that advice. So I think after after saying all of that, while it's a tough one, I'm happy to second that we go with officer's recommendation and grant this application for the for the reasons which uh, which I've just been through. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Rigby, I think your hand is up. Is that <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, well, I won't repeat what's been said. There's been some um, really good arguments put forward on both sides. Um, I, I've really studied this application at length. It's a difficult one. But what's swaying me is that the substantial rebuild is obviously necessary. Um, and what is comforting is that the applicant, I note, has worked with officers over quite a time to overcome and agree areas which were of concern. Um, and what has been decided would do little harm to the conservation area, which I agree, I, I'm all in favour of retaining conservation areas to the maximum wherever possible. But on occasions, we've got to be a tad flexible. So in light of this, um, I can't find a, a clear and definite reason for supporting any refusal. Thank you, Councillor. And um, no one else indicating in the chat function. Is anybody else wishing to um, contribute to the discussion? No, I mean, I, I think in many respects, Councillor Winstanley, you sort of summed it up for us when you said that these questions in in respect of heritage they always come down to a judgment about balance uh, and what's reasonable. Um, I think, to my mind, it's highlighted in paragraph 41 of the report that actually the increase in the footprint of the proposed development it isn't that significant. Um, it's highlighted in paragraph 51 that it is a high quality development that's proposed here. And I think with that in mind, uh, and hearing that the heritage officer has only assessed that um, the level of harm would be minor, um, I, I find myself in agreement with um, the contributions we've heard from Councillor Rigby, Wynne Stanley and um, Cordially. Now, with no one else indicating that they'd like to contribute, I'd suggest that as it's been proposed and seconded, if we now move to the vote on this item. Um, so I will, as you appear on my screen, I'll, I, I will uh, ask you to just confirm verbally uh, how you'd like to vote. 
um, whether or not you are in support or opposing the officer recommendation to grant permission. Um, Councillor Bigby. Um, I support. Thank you. Councillor Jerome. Um, a tough one, but um, I've decided to go against officer recommendation to, and refuse. Yeah. Councillor Thomas. I support the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Winstanley. I uh, support the officer recommendation to grant chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Minnis. I think it's a close one, but I think I'm going to go in support. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Proctor. Support officer recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cordingley. Support chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morgan. Thank you, Chair. Again, tough one, uh, but I think I'm going to go against officer recommendations on this one. Thank you. And Councillor Holden. I tend to agree with uh, Councillor Morgan. I will vote against it. Okay. Uh, and myself, I will be voting uh, in support of officer recommendations to grant. So I make that as this application having been approved. Uh, the next application that we will turn to is 231B Hale Road, which is on page 55 of the committee report. Um, before we hear representations, there will be an introduction provided by Ms Milner. Thank you, Chair. Just sorry, just bear with me a second. I'm just getting the uh, presentation available. Can you see the the start of the presentation and my cursor? Yes, I can see it. That's great. Thank you. Um, so, um, similar to the previous application, um, this application relates to 231B Hale Road, also in the, the South Hale Conservation Area. Um, the site comprises a two-storey detached property, um, features a front driveway shared with the adjacent property of 231, um, and an attached double garage with hip roof, large rear garden, and several trees. Um, Boundaries are formed by a mixture of um, hedges, bushes and trees and neighbouring properties are all residential. Although located within the South Hale Conservation Area um, and behind, again, several listed properties, this was actually built, um, the property was built in the early 2000s, um, but in a style to complement the wider area. Um, the application seeks um, extensions to the front side and rear um, over the existing garage um, and, and to the rear, um, two stories to the rear and, and to the side with extensions to the roof um, and also Juliet balcony. Um, we have again um, on this one received quite a, a number of objections, six or more objections from properties to the rear and side along Grange Avenue. Um, residents are particularly concerned about the, the scale of the proposals um, overlooking from um, the extensions, the impact of the increase in the built form and massing, and the negative impact on the listed houses on Hale Road, and the proximity to the side um, boundary, include, and also the, the loss of spaciousness and, and removing of trees. Um, properties on Grange Road um, are particularly concerned that the proposal will not um, preserve the, the character of the con conservation area. Officers, um, also note that there has been um, a previous refusal on this site in 2011 and this was um, dismissed at appeal, meaning that the inspector agreed it should be refused. However, um, importantly to note, um, the inspector did conclude that extensions to the property then did not harm the setting of the listed buildings. Just to note, the listed buildings are along here. Um, apologies, this is the existing site plan. This is the existing property. As you can see, the, you have the garage to the front that projects out. Um, the proposal is to extend along the side here, going over the garage and up to the side here 
in filling sections and a two-story extension to this section here and to the rear. Um, officers have considered the, the impact on the conservation area and again it is noted that the conservation officer has um, does consider this to be um, of concern and has again cited it to have less than substantial harm on the character of the conservation area because of the loss of spaciousness to the site um, and considers that the proposals do not go far enough um, beyond the previous refusal to address her concerns. Officers have given significant um, consideration to this application and we continue to conclude that there would be no harm to the listed buildings as the proposal does not um, increase the massing towards the front any further than the previous refuse scheme. In regards to the conservation area, we now conclude that because of the change in, in the massing that moves more of the massing to the rear rather than the side, although there will still be extensions to the side, that that spaciousness to the side of the property, um, a character of the conservation area, is um, significantly um, maintained. In regards to the loss of trees, there is no objection from, from our tree officers they can sit and, and the loss of trees is, is minimal. Um, in regards to amenity, we consider that um, given the, the significant um, separation distances to, to the rear properties on Grange Avenue and that any windows on the side above ground floor would be obscure glazed, we have concluded that on balance that there would not be harm to the conservation area or the listed buildings, that it is of an acceptable design and scale and that the impacts on the amenity of um, adjacent residents would on balance be acceptable therefore subject to the conditions as outlined in the committee report we do recommend approval thank you chair um, again, just to pick up finally sorry about the CGI this CGI was submitted with um, from one of the objectors however this is not a verified view this was not assessed as part of the application um, and I know that was sent on to, to members okay thank you Thank you, Ms. Milner. Um, I have Diana speaking against the application, uh, Councillor Mrs. Young and Lindsay Humlet. Um, has there been any agreement about who'd like to speak first? Um, I think um, I'm going to speak first. Is that right, Councillor? That, that's fine, Mr. Humlet. Okay, um, thank you. Three minutes to speak, and if, if you run over time, we'll just politely request that you wrap up. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, the, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, the proposed development raises two principal is issues. The impacts of the development would have on, on heritage considerations um, and also the impact on the immunity of nearby residents. Um, the, the, the images that, um, that uh, Ms Milner has, has put up there, I, I think you've got five, you should have five slides that have been sent on that we've produced and I'm going to talk you through those points around scale massing and the impact on, on the neighbours and the harm to the wider conservation area. So the first diagram is a plan which is plan just uh, which shows the the footprint of the proposals um, and takes away any of the ambiguity that we felt there was around the original drawings. Um, it's um, the, 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 blue, the blue line shows the, the extent of the new extension and then the black line, dotted line on there illustrates the, the original 2011 application which showed it slightly wider to the side but there was no extension to the rear on the 2011 and that is clear on this plan. You can see how it extends out to the rear. Um, this was refused obviously as, as mentioned and, and dismissed at appeal in 2011 um, with the consideration that it would be harmful to the character and appearance of the conservation area and would result in a loss to local residents. Um, I think arg arguably the, the residents are saying that this it's arguable now that this is there's even greater um, impact uh, and it should be dis dismissed uh, um, again uh, on that on that basis. Also, as part of the proposal, a large tree, um, a, a prune savium, a wild, a wild cherry, is to be removed. Um, now, now, in theory, that the, the tree itself is not a great specimen. However, its its removal and the the, the, the condition about uh, having um, a landscape uh, plan um, should be submitted. Now, speaking as a professional, as a, as a landscape architect, uh, any any mitigation, uh, uh, I don't believe within the boundary between two meters and 2.6 meters, you, you could get no mitigation in there with a tree um, without encroaching onto third party land. And during this, the last eight months, in terms of the planning process, there's been no dialogue by the applicant with any of the neighbors to discuss this point um, as, as a principle. Um, 
The second diagram is the end elevation, which is the flat elevation from Grange Avenue. In terms of scale and massing of the existing building, um, the, the house is large, but its scale and mass is broken by the different roof lines. This is the present elevation, um, which is very similar to some of the Edgar Wood architectural style. The, the current proposal seeks to change that with the introduction of a simplified roof form, and much of the bulk is most evident on this northwest elevation, which will create a very dominant, uncharacteristic feature. Uh, in addition, the, the proposals will extend another four metres to the along into the back garden, so it's it's, it's going to be sort of 20, um, nearly 23 metres long as an elevation, um, which we feel is very out of keeping with the, the design of the house and, and, and within the conservation area. The third diagram is the rear elevation, which you, you, you have, which looks at the back of the house, essentially. Um, the built footprint would increase on the plan by 23.5%. Um, now go back to 2011 and it was 18%. So it's, it's, it's a significant increase over that. Um, and you can also see that the extension now is extending over the ridge line, the higher level of the house. So that Mr. creates a more Honda, dominant. If you could just sort of make it brief okay. conclusion. Okay, so yes. the final two images, which, which are the slides which show the visual. So there's the existing visual showing the blue line. And then there is the view from one of the properties on Grange Avenue that shows the bulk and massing as a white block model. The, the building has been modeled from the architectural plans. Um, and I think, I, I think it describes um, visually the, the impact and the reason why all of the residents along Grange Avenue are objecting to this application. Um, we, we, we've, I think during the planning process, I and other residents have carefully considered the numerous amendments on this scheme. Um, and we've discussed this scheme at length together. I think I speak on behalf of all the residents who've made their representations, expressing their opposition to the scheme. Oh, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Hamlet. Thank you for your remarks. That's much appreciated. Thanks. Um, Councillor Mrs. Young, are you happy to now speak? Thank you again, Mr. Chairman, for letting me speak. Should this new extension to 231B Hale Road be allowed, it will loom over the surrounding fence and probably cause a claustrophobic feeling to anyone looking at it from the gardens in Grange Road. A two-storey side extension and front garage extension to this house was refused, as you've heard, in 2011 and went to an appeal which was subsequently dismissed. This appeal included a two-storey side extension with the first floor element in closer proximity to the northwest boundary, and also included a large garage extension with raised roof eaves and ridge height. In 2011, the inspector considered that the proposed previous scheme would have adverse impact on the living conditions of these residents within their gardens. The inspector noted that a number of the rear boundaries were open to 231B. The proposed extension would bring the first floor of the dwelling closer to the boundary. The inspector then concluded that consequently, because of its scale, mass, detailed design and proximity to the appeal site boundary, the proposal would appear extremely dominant and oppressive and have a detrimental effect on living conditions within the gardens of nearby dwellings. The fact that the first floor will now be slightly less close to the boundary does not take away from the fact that the development overall will be between 2 and 2.6 metres and extending 4 metres from the existing rear elevation. The northwest elevation has little relief with an extensive, largely blank wall and large roof. It will appear as an oppressive overbearing mass for the surrounding, for the surrounding residents. The comments of the inspector therefore still apply. We are told that section 72 of the Planning Act 1990 requires local planning authorities to pay special attention in the exercise of planning functions to the desirability of preserving or enhancing the character of a conservation area and not to allow any adverse impacts which would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits. The special interest of the conservation area is enhanced by the cumulative effect created by its spaciousness, the mature landscaping and the compatibility of natural and man-made features. The failure of the applicant to address the concerns raised by the inspector and the overall inappropriateness of the current proposals are shared by the council's conservation officer, 
who states, there is now a marginal reduction in the extensions proposed to the Northwest elevation, which are welcomed. However, this is still an increase in built form towards the Northwest side boundary. The scheme now proposes a substantial two-story projection to the North elevation. This will increase the amount of built form along the side boundary. However, when comparing the previously refused scheme with the current proposals, I fail to see how these latest revisions address the concerns raised by the inspector. In respect of development so close to the side boundary, he considered the development would erode the spacious character and appearance of the South Hale Conservation Area. These views of the conservative office of the conservation officer should not be ignored, and this proposal rejected due to the adverse impact that this overdevelopment would have on the conservation area. We are lucky in Trafford that we possess a number of beautiful homes. This area around Hale Road has a large cluster of houses designed by architects such as Edgar Wood and John Cockle, who produced this built up area of buildings that is unique in the United Kingdom. We are caretakers of the conservation area, which we should be preserving for future generations. Thank you very much for letting me speak. Thank you, Councillor Mrs. Young. Um, I cannot see any members as having indicated they'd like to open. Oh. I, I, I thought there was... Um, there is somebody, somebody speaking in favour, sorry. Mr. Tom Bedford, are you on the call, Mr. Bedford? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Apologies for that, then. Um, no, no, you have three minutes to speak, um, and as, a, as with um, previous speakers, if you run over time, I'll just politely request that you wrap up. Thank you. OK. Thanks very much, Chair. Um, my, my client is relocating back to Hale uh, with a growing family and their very close family relations are now will now need to travel significant dis distances to visit. Therefore, the additional space is required uh, to continue living in their family home and accommodate their, their visiting family members. We have worked closely with the case officer to address all concerns through detailed changes to develop the scheme, which the case officer and the principal planning officer are now supporting and recommending for approval. Inspiration was taken from the architectural style of the existing house and the wider conservation area using high quality materials, architectural features and detailing to sympathetically integrate the proposal. The conservation officer welcomed these changes yet raises some concerns about the impact on the grade two listed building and conservation area using the previously refused scheme to support her comments. They do not recognize the extent of the changes from the refused application, nor do they refer to the secluded position of the proposal. The inspector at the time raised no concerns on the impact of the nearby listed buildings. Therefore, these objections are disproportionate to the small decrease in space between the single storey side extension and the side boundary when comparing the existing dwelling and the proposal. With reference to the case officer report, the proposal is considered to respect its setting and would preserve and not cause any harm to the spatial character, appearance or significance of the, uh, of the South Hale conservation area alongside the setting of the adjacent grade two listed buildings. Proposed garage extension is smaller and sympathetically designed by maintaining existing eaves and ridge heights. The side ex extension is predominantly single storey, maintaining a similar distance to the boundary as the existing garage with a two storey element further away again. This in itself is, is notably different to the refused application, which had a full two storey side extension within 2.4 metres of the boundary. The South Hale SPG has now been superseded and there is no now no reference to the distance between boundaries in which the previous application was determined. It is the council's view that the siting and scale of the side extension is considered acceptable in preserving the spacious character of the conservation area. Referring back to the case officer report again, the concerns raised by the, raised by the council and planning inspector at the time regarding spaciousness and the character of the area are considered to have been overcome through the present design. The proposal is considered to be of a high quality design and proportionate in scale and mass of the existing, sitting, sitting comfortably within the plots with su sufficient space to boundaries and overall scale reflecting, reflective of the surrounding properties. Therefore, it does not constitute overdevelopment. Although the built form is close to the boundary of the properties along Grange Avenue, sufficient facing distances will still be provided. The step design of the side extension, varied roofscape, drop in ridge heights and hip roof design avoids any overbearing impact and unreasonable visual intrusion on their immunities. 
windows along the elevation are to be obscurely glazed to protect privacy and reduce any potential overlooking. There will be no objections from highways, agricultural consultees or landscaping with regards to this application. To conclude, I would like to refer back to the case officer's report. It is considered that there are no adverse impacts that would significantly or demonstrably outweigh the benefits of granting permission. Hopefully through working closely and productively with the case officer to produce a high quality and well-designed scheme which respects, preserves and enhances the South Hale conservation area, the recommended approval can be supported. Many thanks. Thank you, Mr. Bedford. Um, I think in the chat that Councillor Corden, you've indicated you'd like to open the debate. Ah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I like, I'd like to propose accepting the officer's recommendation on this. I've been to see the site. I was lucky enough to get in via the occupants of 231A. Um, and the, the distance between this property and the neighbouring properties is spacious. It is spacious. I, I don't, I, I think we're overblowing this. Um, it's going to remain spacious after the development. Um, I'm quite happy to support the proposal. It brings it back into use. Um, the, the, the family who let me in were very supportive and they're the nearest neighbors. Um, so I, I, I see no, I think the planners have worked hard to get this to approve and not have an impact on the listed buildings, which is the most important uh, aspect. Um, but I think they've worked through that and I think they've ended up with a good proposal and I'm happy to propose support. Thank you, Councillor Corden. Um, Councillor Morgan indicated in the chat. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'll be brief. Um, I can't particularly say I particularly like this development. I think it's a real, it is a very big, massive development. Um, but I think it is, and I do note the heritage officer's comments, which I know I said on a previous um, um, application. But I do think it's worth noting that the only the, those who've, who've um, made their opposition in the comments on the planning portal. Um, are all on Grange uh, um, Avenue, and they aren't in the South Hale Conservation Area. Um, it is this plot and those to the to the previous plot. Um, I'm not entirely sure I'd have approved the original application, but I don't actually think I do. I'm going to agree with the council calling that. I don't think it. I don't think it makes any um, negative impact on the South Hale Conservation Area. So I think I will probably be supporting officer recommendations tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Um, any other members looking to contribute to the discussion? No. Um, well, I suppose I find myself largely in agreement with Council accordingly. I think the, the key point for me is that actually the, the plots here, that they're, they're sizable and uh, they're capable of accommodating an extension. And, you know, when you look at the pictures of the gardens and the surrounding area, it's clear that the, the de developments in this place can be... Um, almost camouflaged or mitigated for because of the foliage and because of the trees present. And I think critically, again, similarly to the last application, it's a question of balance, isn't it? About whether or not the harm is so extensive that it wouldn't be reasonable um, to grant a permission. I think in, in this instance, I, I think, I don't, I don't see there as being sub, sub, substantial harm to heritage or the character of the conservation area that couldn't approve this. So as a consequence, I'm happy to second uh, Councillor Cordy Lee's proposal that we approve the application this evening. Um, are there any members with a burning desire to contribute before we move to a vote? Final can, can I speak, uh, Councillor? Yeah, Councillor. Uh, I, I did say in the chat, but just before Mike calling me, but I think you might miss me, but uh, not 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 problem. Um, yeah, I, I I think it is a a tough one here, and I do think it's finely balanced again, and similar to the last application but um i would to take into account what the heritage officer has, has said and i know that's been repeated already but he does say it would erode the spacious character and appearance of the south hill conservation area and i thought the arguments put forward by councillor young and um the resident speaking against were, were quite compelling um and i i thought i think there is an impact on heritage and amenity so i, I would disagree um and i think um Councillor Young also mentioned a, a cumulative impact. Um, and, and when you do keep kind of chipping away at 
a conservation area, I think it, it, it can kind of amount to over time, uh, you know, an impact. Um, so I think I'd probably, it's a tough decision, but I probably will be voting against officer recommendation again. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Jerome. Apologies for not clocking that you'd indicated that. Um, are there any other members looking to contribute to the discussion? No, but the application has now been proposed and seconded that we approve permission in line with officer recommendation. So I'll cycle through members as you appear on the screen and ask you to verbally confirm how you're voting. Um, Councillor Rigby. Yes, I support. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jerome. I'm against you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Thomas. I support, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Winstone. Uh, thanks, Chair. Approving land officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minnis. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I can't see a real reason to object, so I'll be um, uh, in support of officer recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Proctor. Recommendation to grant. So, can you just repeat that? I missed the start there. Sorry, Councillor. Support. <laughs> support. <laughs> Councillor Corden, mate. Sorry about that, I support. I suddenly couldn't get the mute button. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morgan. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, like Councillor Menace, can't see a reason to oppose, so I'll uh, be supporting officer recommendations. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Holden. I would support the officer's recommendations. And I will be voting in favour of officer recommendations. So I think that's nine to one. Um, consequently, that permission has been granted this evening. Um, thank you for those people who turned up to contribute to the discussion. Um, the next application that we will be determining is Great Stone Hotel, which is on page 139 of your committee reports. Um, and there will be an officer introduction from uh, Mr. Pearson. Thank you, Chairman. If you could just bear with me for a sec whilst I uh, try and share my screen. Can everybody see the uh, the site plan on the screen? Okay, um, this application relates to uh, the site of the Great Stone Hotel in Stratford. Uh, there are two existing buildings on the eastern side of Chester Road, one of which is used as a hotel, the other is ancillary residential accommodation. So you can see the two buildings here. Outline planning permission is sought for the demolition of the two buildings and their replacement with a part five, part four story L shaped residential apartment building to provide 56 apartments, 10% of which would be affordable. Approval is sought for all matters other than the appearance and landscaping, which are reserved. The application is reported to committee because uh, more than six representations contrary to officer recommendation have been received. Uh, so I'll just talk you through the, the scheme very brief, briefly. Uh, what you can see here is a single building covering most of the site. The vehicular access is from, from this point here where my cursor is, um, with a little bit of landscaping to the front. Um, but then the access road runs all the way down the side of the building around to a car park, which uh, covers the remaining part of the site. Um, so that's the um, that's the ground floor uh, layout there. Let's move on to the elevations. Um, what we see here um, is the entrance large and portal to, uh, to the park, and then to the right of it, the building as as amended, as reduced in height. So five stories across pretty much the full width of the site, rather than allowing for site access to the right of the building. And then the, the view that you see up here um, is taken from the rear. So there you see in a kind of abstract way, the, the rear of the entrance portal. Um, this bit being the return leg of the building. So the, the element that runs alongside the entrance path to the park 
and then the taller element behind it, the the bit that um, fronts fronts the main road, and in, in here, of course, would be the car park. And there, just the other elevation. So that's the elevation to the entrance to the park, along the path of the park, and that's the return side elevation. If you were to look at it from the social club on on the green side of the site. Um, just one other image there, which is taken from inside the park, which illustrates that in, whilst in summer the, the trees provide a reasonable screen to the site, in, in winter the, the site is very much open to view and, and has quite an impact on the setting of the, uh, not just the park, but the, the lodges as well. So as set out in the officer report, um, we have no objection in principle to the redevelopment of the site, but we consider the specific application to be unacceptable for a number of reasons. As I said, the proposal seeks permission for a large L-shaped single building, which is rather monolithic in character. We consider the form of the development to be inappropriate and out of character with the urban grain of the area, which is characterised by much smaller residential buildings of lower height. Officers are extremely concerned about the height, scale, mass and sighting of the development, which is considered to represent poor design, will have a dominating and adverse impact on the adjacent park and listed buildings, as well as the area generally. The site would be dominated by the building, parking area and access road, with no space ava available for any meaningful high quality community space at ground level. Unlimited space for loss scan for landscaping due to the cramped and overdeveloped nature of the site. This would result in a poor standard of immunity for future residents, we believe, which would be exacerbated by the failure of most of the apartments to meet the nationally described space standards. As I mentioned before, the site sits adjacent to the Grade 2 listed Gorse Hill Park entrance portable lodges, Great Stone, and the Stratford War, Memor War Memorial across the A56, which is also great to listed. The development is considered to cause major harm to the entrance portal of lodges, moderate harm to the war memorial. In MPPF terms, this is considered to equate to less than substantial harm to the significance of the list of buildings. This harm is not considered to be outweighed by the public benefits of the proposals. The major benefits are seen as additional residential units, and the 10% affordable housing. However, it is considered that such benefits could also be delivered by a more appropriately designed scheme that sat more comfortably with its surroundings. Despite requests to the applicant, insufficient justification has been provided to adequately demonstrate that the level of parking provision will be sufficient to accommodate demand arising from the proposed development and that would not result in harm to residential amenity through overspill parking within the surrounding area. There are 56 apartments proposed on site and 23 car sleepers. As the development is specifically restricted by a paragraph 11D1 of the MPPF due to the heritage impacts, the tilted balance does not apply in this case as it does for many residential events. And for the reasons, the other reasons I've identified, the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you, Sean. I'll take the screen down. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Um, I understand there's nobody speaking against the application, um, but there is somebody speaking in favour of an overturn of officer recommendation uh, to approve the application. Mr. Hines. Hello, Chair. Hi, Mr. Hines. Um, you have three minutes to speak, and if you're everyone, I'll just politely request that you wrap up your remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Hello, Committee. The proposal is to redevelop the hotel. The site is a suitable brownfield site for redevelopment, so every unit that developed here will mean one unit less on a greenfield site. Demolition is acceptable, as is redevelopment for housing. In short, it is a site where redevelopment should be supported in principle. The site is in a sustainable location close to local amenities, as well as being well served by public transport, bus services along the A56 and a Metrolink nearby. There is no objection from the local highway authority. 
The proposal is to provide 56 apartments in a modest height building of five storeys fronting the A56 and four storeys to the rear. The roof terrace provides for external amenity space for all occupiers, whilst the vast majority of apartments benefit from private balconies. The design has taken account of the immediate surroundings, including the nearby listed buildings and Gores Hill Park. The surroundings contain large commercial buildings, including Tesco, various car showrooms and Trafford House at 12 storeys high. The development covers 36% of the site's area. The proposed scale compares well with the range of development suggestions set out in the Emerging Area Action Plan for the Civic Quarter and the recently built out Nova Scheme. The scheme before you has been amended several times since the pre-application proposal in 2018, reducing the height of both parts of the building as well as the number of apartments proposed. The proposal has, however, been carefully designed by leading architects and is a bespoke scheme. The objections to design relate to height and massing, but the height of the five-storey frontage is 87 centimetres higher than the height of Burley Court's opposite. The site boundary runs alongside the path leading from the A56 to the park. It's worth noting that the path is little used, as evidenced by the vandalised state of the gates themselves. Most pedestrians enter the park by one of three other access points. With regard to the wider impact of the proposal on the listed buildings, it is agreed that impacts will be low. The new building will be further away from the gates than is the existing building, and we believe will improve the setting of those gates. The proposal will not overlook the main areas of the park. Users of the playing pitches to the rear will be some distance away. The park is in any event surrounded by development. The consultation, sorry, the application has received 12 comments from members of the public nine of which are local to the area and of which only two object. There is generally local support. Benefits. The proposal efficiently reuses a brownfield site for which there are no objections on the grounds of noise, air quality, flood risk, arboriculture, ecology, access, servicing or highway safety. The proposal delivers affordable housing as the development will comply with policy. The proposal makes efficient use of an urban site and delivers much needed housing itself, we consider a significant and demonstrable public benefit. If planning permission is granted, we suggest a planning agreement is entered into to secure off-site landscaping at the boundary of the site with the park, as well as at the War Memorial, as well as affordable housing in numbers to comply with policy. Chair and committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Um, a number of members have indicated they'd like to contribute to the discussion. Councillor Corden, maybe you could. Um, Chairman. Chairman. Sorry. Yeah. Chairman. Um, Mr. Pearson, you've indicated. So, sorry, you'd to like to yes, to sorry. I posted a note in the, in the chat, but it was rather late. Um, yeah, I just feel I wanted to to come back really on a number of points that Mr. Uh, Hines has raised. I think it's quite important to do so. Now, uh, a number of the points that he raised um, are covered in the letter that he submitted to members and officers earlier in the week. Um, and those are covered in the additional information report. So you can see those on page uh, 16 onwards. Um, but I think it's important also to, to cover a number of other points, um, both both that were in the letter and that Mr. Hines has just raised in his address to the committee. Uh, the suggestion that the applicant has worked proactively with planning officers to ensure that they address our concerns. Um, most recently, they suggest by reducing the height of the proposal by a single story is really not true, I'm afraid. Um, officers have provided clear advice at pre-application stage and raised concerns. I mean, Mr. Hines suggested our design concerns relate to height and massing. That's a very simplistic view of the case. That's, that's really not the case. Our concerns relate to form, first and foremost, the fact that this is a single large building on this site, but not just form, scale, mass, layout. Um, and the advice that we gave, both at pre-application stage and when the application came in, has been largely disregarded. I mean, the last bit, as I've just touched on, it refer, refers to objections from the council being subjective matters of design. These are not subjective matters. The, the MPPF is clear that the creation of high quality buildings and places is fundamental to what the planning and development process should achieve. 
The fact that we have a lack of a five-year housing land supply should not mean development at any cost. So the suggestion that this is a brownfield site, so any, any development that you achieve on this site is a greenfield site saved is, is an argument that's simply too simplistic. Um, so there are a number of other issues. Um, so we, we've set out our concerns about design in, in, the, in the reports. Uh, we've updated those in the additional information reports. I mean, the reference to, to Burley Court across the road being of the same height, the Burley Court is a reasonably tall building, albeit its design is very different to this one. But the mass of Burley Court is a fraction of the mass that would result from, from this development because of the width of it, because of the depth of it. In relation to matters of heritage, um, these are set out in the commissary courts reports and they're obviously categorised as less than substantial uh, harm as required by the MPPF. But we do, again, as, as recommended in the PPF and the PPG, we do set out what that level of harm is and that's articulated as major harm at the upper end of that scale in relation to the lodge and gates. Now, Mr. Hines has suggested that the harm identified to the heritage assets is solely to the asset setting, not direct harm to the assets at all. So again, this is, this is a worrying thing to say because um, assets may be affected by you know, physical changes to the building or by the change in their setting. And harm to the setting of a listed building is still harm to its significance. The Planning Act and Acts and the MPPF don't differentiate the weight to be given to an impact on a listed building or its setting, but to give less weight to a, a harmful impact because it is to setting rather than the building itself would be unlawful. Mr. Hines has also suggested that um, the MPPF requires there to be clear reasons for refusing the development on heritage grounds, um, and that given the less than substantial harm, uh, that's identified, the tilted balance should not be engaged. But again, the MPPF is very clear that great weight should be given to an asset's conservation, irrespective of whether any potential harm amounts to substantial harm, total loss, or less than substantial harm to its significance. So again, this assessment is appropriately set out in the report. Um, again, it would be unlawful to conclude that less than substantial harm means that the tilted balance is not engaged. In terms of the parking issues, uh, Mr. Hines said that the local highway authority didn't object to the proposal. The local highway authority are concerned about the proposal because they don't feel sufficient justification has been provided for the level of parking uh, proposed. Um, and to suggest that that matter could be conditioned again would be inappropriate because those matters really need to be considered during the consideration of the application. Uh, just one final point, um, a couple of final points in relation to the, the, the impact on amenity of future residents. Again, I think the suggestion from Mr Hines is that our concern relates to a lack of amenity space. That is the case. We, do, we are concerned about amenity space, but it's also about the, poor st the general poor standard of amenity for future residents and the fact that these, these apartments don't meet the national space standards. And then sorry, one final point in relation to the heads of terms that, that were put to members of the letter. Um, a number of those points, points two, three and four relating to landscaping, spotlights and birds are matters which should committee be minded to approve the application or things that should be dealt with by condition. Whilst the final one, the fixtures and fittings from the Great Stone Hotel is just not a planning matter at all. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry that that took some time. All right, thank you, Mr. Pearson. Um, Councillor Wynn, uh, Councillor Cord in the indicated light to open them up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is in my ward, so I think I'm probably uh, right to speak first. Um, yeah, I'm not going to blur the issue particularly because I think um, uh, David Pearson's put a lot of the view, a lot of the reasons for refusal there. I do support refusal. Um, I don't think this is the right development. Um, I hope they can come back and come back with a better one because although I rather like the Great Stone Hotel, I do acknowledge it's reached the end of its life. 
Um, so the, 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 in terms of the massing, the, uh, the size, the impact on listed buildings, all the things that um, uh, Mr. Pierce has mentioned, I think we should back the um, um, uh, refusal on this one and uh, totally support the refusal. I propose that we accept it. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Jerome. Thanks, Chair. I, I won't talk for too long either, as not to repeat other people. And I ag agree with the uh, Councillor accordingly and, and happy to second, second him on, on um, supporting officer recommendation. Um, I'll just do. So, um, I, I think uh, Mr. Pearson uh, describes everything really, and I, I would also look at the uh, heritage and, and agree with the refusal on that. I mean, paragraph ninety-six, I think, is very compelling. Um, that the pro proposed development represents a, a poor design, as in this, especially in this location on scale, massing, and, and siting. Um, and it would have a, an adverse impact on Gorsill Park, I think, which was clear in, in the introduction. Um, but I saw, I went to, onto Historic England uh, website just to have a look at the gates. And on, on that website, it tells us the gates that, to the park are, are mid 19th century. They were the original gates to Trafford Hall. So I think in, in, in heritage terms, there's, there's some of the most important heritage in the borough. You know, Trafford Hall no longer exists, but the the, the lake still it, it exists at the Ecology Park, and and the gates to that that um, that hall exist at the park. So they are of the highest significance, and I think uh, this building does have an impact um, on those gates. And, and you know, though there's there's many compelling um, arguments for uh, this building on Brownfield site. You know, it's, there is it meets it's compliant with affordable housing. I do think the heritage impact is, is just too high and I will be supporting um, the officer recommendation to refuse. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Jerome. Councillor Winstanley. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'll also be supporting the officer recommendation. I was a bit disappointed with this because unlike Councillor Cordingley, I don't like the Great Stone Hotel at all. And every time I drive up Chester Road or take my life in my hands and cycle up Chester Road, it is a real eyesore. And I was a bit disappointed that the... Do we, uh, I'm happy that it will be, to be demolished, but that the, the building to be replaced, that, that was scheduled to be uh, was being considered tonight, is wrong for all the reasons we that councillors accordingly and Jerome have gone through and have been uh, well summed up by uh, Mr. Pearson. So I will be um, voting to refuse this. Uh, before I finish, can I just make a note, a uh, shout out to the officers, because I'm really pleased that in this application, there's a whole section on equalities, 89 to 93, which is fantastic. I, I feel there's some kind of step change in the way that we consider, um, in the way that we consider uh, planning applications. Um, though I would, I would, just to say another thing on that, in the, in the paragraph 93, we're talking about no disbenefits in terms of equalities, and I think we can be stronger than that in our relationships with developers, and we should be talking about ways of generating um, benefits under the equality section. Not a section for a, for a big debate tonight, but just to, to note that. So, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Proctor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I concur with what uh, has been said so far. Um, I think that obviously the heritage issue is a, is a, is a problem and also the the impact on the the park i think it will have a not significant but it will have an impact on on the visual amenity in the park so there's two big issues but for me the major one is the the car, the parking issue i mean currently the great stone hotel you've got um, 24 rooms this is 56 apartments um and very very limited car parking spaces 23 it is a good mix you know there's some disabled park spaces motorcycle spaces and electric vehicle charging points um and quite a lot of uh, bike spaces so that's that's good but overall i think it would be an issue um much emphasis is made in the report about the public transport facilities nearby and yes there is a good bus route on the 56 right next to it but 
you look at the, the metro link, it's quite a distance away. So I don't think that is particularly significant. So I think this, this current you know, plan would be a major problem for the, for the area in, in terms of car parking. So that's my particular emphasis. Obviously, you know, we want to see brownfield sites uh, established and, and the, you know, the housing would be an important uh, benefit to, to Trafford. But I think the, the negative aspects of this application are too severe for us to approve it. And I will be voting with the, along with the officer recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And Councillor Minnis. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've, uh, I was really, really excited to see obviously Brownfield site uh, being up, but obviously not the way that um, the, pro the pro proposed um, idea is. Uh, there's a number of issues, isn't there? There's a number of obviously the size of it, how it then dwarfs things that are clearly of um, important um, heritage, you know, concerns for us and we want to have those assets there um, and that we can see those and I mean, it's not massive there's not a big block building to effectively dwarf it and um, there's also I'd, I'd like something to come I would like it developed though I would like it to be developed but something far more suitable and um, I also want people to think about you know where, where provisions of yes housing but also uh, where you know school places would be so that we can have um, something that's much more suitable we've got 56 dwellings there where people are going to go to school etc lots and lots of things to, to you know say i'm not i'm not fan of and um, so i'll be supporting the officer's recommended recommendations right to, to refuse thank you thank you councillor minnis and um, councillor hartley thank you chair uh, like other members, I'll be supporting the officer recommendation to to refuse the application. Um, I, I agree with what, most of what's been said, and I'll, I'll try not to repeat that. Um, the the current site, and I probably agree with Councillor Wynne Stanley. I think that um, you know the current site, or certainly the buildings on the site, are quite dilapidated, and they are a bit of an eyesore and have been for some time. So, I would like to see the site developed. Uh, you know, so in principle, fine to demolish those buildings and to develop the site. And in principle, you know, I'd probably accept that the development that, that will occur there is likely to be likely to be residential, and likely to be uh, apartments. Um, but I think as the report it concludes, really, the fact that there is uh, a housing shortage in Trafford and that we need to build dwellings and that we need to build on brownfield land doesn't mean we, uh, you know, we can throw up poor quality uh, housing and, and I think that's what this is to be honest the the development is is overly dominant uh, the, you know the massing is too great I, I can see that it would be perfectly possible to to develop that site and and have a, a, a building with you know a smaller mass further further back from the from the front of the site which would um, you know uh, mitigate some of the impact on the on the heritage uh, assets that are in that area and, and if you go to the area you, you you can see that there's a there's a, you know, there's a sense of like a circle or a semicircular opening, you know, sort of clearing there where the heritage assets are, are placed and, and this this would interfere with that. So I, you know, I do agree that there is, you know, major, uh, if less than substantial harm to those to those heritage assets. And, you know, we should be looking to to enhance those assets, uh, not just preserve them as they are and, and not be making them worse. And, and again, that would be possible, I think, with the development here, but this, this proposal uh, doesn't doesn't do that. Um, the design is poor. I know the I know the appearance is a reserved uh, matter, but I think the design of the scheme, in terms of size of the apartments, which are, which are small, below the national space standards, and also the lack of amenity space, um, I think this makes this a you know a poor design. So, you know, I'll do. We do need housing, um, and we do need to develop brownfield sites. We can we can do better than this, uh, and and people uh, coming to live in Trafford, you know, we have a big variety of housing, but you know, we need to ensure we have uh, good quality, uh, good quality design, good quality development, and and that people are accommodated in 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 good quality uh, dwellings, you know, whatever their whatever their means. So um, for for those reasons, I'll be supporting the officer recommendation to to refuse. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hartley and Councillor Morgan. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, be very brief. Um, I, to be honest with you, totally agree whether I heard Councillor accordingly um, at the start um, in terms of his reason why he'll be supporting officer recommendations to refuse. Um, I originally read this and were, presumed that we were, were granting it and um, was quite pleased when I saw the officer recommendations um, towards the end. Um, yeah, I mean, Mr. Pearson said exactly. This isn't just we're just protecting. This isn't just been the planning officers on a mere technicality. This is um, there's really substantive reasons why. Um, and I mean, I actually quite like the view of the hotel. If it could be saved, it probably can't. But we do need better application than, than this, and um, on such a such an important um, part of our borough in such a prominent location. On Chester Road. So, yeah, I'll be very not with officer recommendations refused. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. And Councillor Vigby, your hand is up, I think. Yes, um, I'll, I'll put it down because um, Councillor Hartley has been reading my script. He said exactly what I was going to say, um, and I'll be supporting the officer's recommendations. Thank you, Councillor. I mean, I, I think it appears that the uh, opinion of um, committee is pretty unanimous on this now. Um, I, I would just say myself that. I was really quite disappointed the further I got into um, scrutinising this application. Uh, given all of the remarks I've made at planning committees previously, I was expecting to be enthusiastic about an application on a brownfield site that would deliver um, a policy compliant level of affordable housing. But as you start to um, trawl through the committee report, and it's an extremely robust report because it touches on every single aspect of failing uh, with this application, you realise that, that you, you simply cannot support this. One of the things that leapt out at me, and it was a tiny detail, was the fact that officers have assessed that the balconies included uh, on some of the flats are so tiny in size that they're practically unfit for use. And you know, not only um, do some of the flats fall beneath uh, the proposed uh, the acceptable space standard for new developments. They fall wildly below. Yeah, and I, I, I say that as somebody who thinks that the uh, agreeable space standard for new developments is too small as it stands. So I, I'm not going to be supporting this application. I think it's in a location that is of civic importance to Trafford and of civic importance to Stratford. And I just have this vision of a great big huge block of flats sat on top of our war memorial and I don't think that's an acceptable way um, to honour that site. So um, it has been proposed and seconded that we vote in line with officer recommendation to refuse this application and I'll, I'll now move on to the vote. Um, Councillor Jerome if you can confirm how you're voting this evening, thank you. That's a recommendation to refuse, thanks Chair. Thank you Councillor. Councillor Thomas. I support the recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wynne Stanley. Uh, thank you, Chair. Vote in line with officer recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minnis. Um, I'm supporting the officer recommendation to refuse. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Proctor. Proctor. <laughs> support officer recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Support officer recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor accordingly. Still support officer recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rigby. Support the re officer's recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morgan. Uh, support officer recommendation to refuse, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Holden. Support the uh, officer's recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Councillor. And I will be voting to support officer recommendation to refuse. And I make that uh, a unanimous refusal of the application. Thank you. Um, the next application that we'll be turning to is Chesham House, uh, which is on page 139 of your committee report. And um, before we hear from uh, representatives, we've got an officer introduction from Mr. Pearson. Uh, uh, sorry, Chairman, it's myself um, who will be presenting this one. Just, just bear with me. While, that's fine. Just bear with me while I share my screen.
Can everybody see that? Excellent. Um, this, this is Chesham House on Church Road in Ermston. And uh, members will recall that earlier in the autumn, this site came before the planning committee uh, for the authorization for the survey of an Article 4 direction to prevent the demolition of the property. Uh, there have been a number of applications for demolition, uh, which also proposed the replacement of the existing properties with two uh, new semi-detached properties. Members at, at that meeting resolved unanimously that the Article 4 direction should be served and with immediate effect, and, 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 that, and that took place. Um, the uh, site owner's res response to this has been um, uh, has been to propose the retention of the property. Um, so this application doesn't propose its demolition, uh, but instead it's, it, it's extension to enable its subdivision into two semi-detached dwellings. The application is reported to committee because there have been six or more objections received uh, contrary to the officer recommendation. The key issues here are the impact on non-designated heritage assets design and residential amenity. Um, officers consider that, that, that this particular proposal will have a, a negligible degree of harm on the heritage grounds uh, associated with the extension subdivision of the, the, the building. Uh, the fact that the building is being, re is being retained in this scheme is a significant benefit. Uh, the fact that it needs to be extended in order to do that, um, uh, that, that, that is considered on, on balance to be a, a, a neutral impact. Uh, and, and the benefits of keeping it are, are obviously positive um, and in a viable use. There's also benefits uh, in respect of the provision of, of new housing. Uh, the impact of the proposals on residential amenity in the neighbouring properties and, and its parking impacts have already be, all, also been considered and are considered to be acceptable and therefore the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Coley. Um, we have got statements, I think, um, against and for the application. Um, a statement from Mr. Alexander against the application. Is that being read out? Yes, um, uh, Mr. Day and Ms. Lowe's are going to read one out each. I can't recall which who, who's doing which one at the at present, but whoever's doing the one to they can uh, sort that out. Yeah, I'm going to read the objection. Yeah, is, is that's. Is that the one you want next? Uh, please, Mr. Day, thank you. Yes, yeah, so it's um, an objection from John Alexander. Um, I object to the proposals for Chesham House on the grounds that they constitute a loss of amenity. Such large detached properties have been important in the development of the urban district from its inception, providing premises for various health officers and clinics, as well as district council officers, Moorfield, Ermston, and Collingwood, Davy Hume. They've also proved essential in the setting up of rest homes, nurseries, surgeries, offices, and social clubs throughout the area. Chesham House is a prime example of such multi-purpose use, having been a family hotel, and before that, a starter home for Abbotsfield School. I list these facts to illustrate the point that such properties are not the white elephants they claim to be by the developers, but can play an essential role in the local economy. My argument is that by making another of these convertibles, i.e. properties that have the potential for numerous uses into yet another semi-detached house, it not only reduces the variety of the local housing stock, but also limits the scope such buildings offer to business startups. They've already been seriously depleted. It is about time that properties such as Chesham House are recognised as having an intrinsic value beyond that of the land on which they stand. They are soundly built and will outlast many more recent developments. There is nothing in the area, um, sorry, there is nothing in the area that can replace them. The bulk of pre and post-war properties lack the capacity for change. No one will be able to set up a small hotel or a day nursery in a three bed semi. Indeed, many such houses are already proving unsuitable for present day living. All across the districts, housings, ha householders are having add-ons, cramming another bedroom into a roof space, making a garage into a living room, erecting an office in the garden. It is ironic that in light of such developments, it should be deemed necessary for a viable residence 
to be reduced in size, albeit gaining two for the price of one. These proposals also come at a time when there's a recognition that work and living patterns are changing radically. There is a discernible move towards people working from home, and it is anticipated that this will become the norm in the years ahead. Along with this, there is a rise in three generational households, also requiring larger houses. So there is little doubt that properties such as Chesham House will be, a much, will be much needed in the district. Should a split in the property be agreed, it should be made on the proviso that it can be made reversible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Day. Uh, Ms. Lowe's. Hi, yes, hi, Chair. I'll um, be reading a statement from uh, Mr. Kevin Coogan. I'm making this submission on behalf of my wife, Patricia Coogan, the applicant. The proposal is actually a family venture. We have pooled our resources to undertake this development. The proposal is to provide two good family homes, one to which my wife and I will retire, along with our adult son who has Down syndrome. The other house will be for our daughter's family. Our daughter and family have lived in Amsterdam for over 15 years. She owns a child nursery in the Trafford area, giving employment to around 40 people. As you are probably aware, Chesham House has not been a residence for over 80 years. Throughout this time, it has been in commercial use, firstly as a building in education use, and more recently as a guest house. When we investigated this building, there was no way of telling that it was a non-designated asset. In fact, this was not raised as an issue until after we purchased and we were well into the planning process. Nevertheless, that being the case, we prepared an alternative scheme to embrace the council's wish to have the building retained. It is this scheme which is before you now. I'm not sure if you've been around the building, understandably difficult in the current time. The rear of the building is in, is in a poor state, with old stock brick showing its age, along with a mishmash of substandard windows and lean-tos. Internally, the building has suffered throughout its years in commercial use. Very little of the original features exist. Internal subdivisions abound. Moreover, the original fabric and structure is in extreme need of attention. Defects range from defective roof structure, defective floors propped up with makeshift supports, damp ingress, poor and defective windows, and substantial presence of asbestos. The wiring and plumbing services are also well past their sell-by. All in all, a well-hacked about building, crying out for a sympathetic conversion. We engaged a local award-winning designer. He has worked closely with Mr. Wiseman. Between them, they have produced a most sympathetic scheme to convert from commercial to family living, while not detracting from the character of the original building. I myself am a retired architect and intend one of these houses to be our forever home. So clearly I have the know-how and a vested interest in ensuring the restoration to a very high standard. We have made contact with our immediate neighbours who have been most welcoming and supportive. There have been no concerns regarding our scheme having a negative impact upon them. In fact, they, are very, they very much want to see the building back in family use. Subject to approval, we intend to appoint a local reputable contractor to undertake the scheme in one bite, thus minimising disruption during building works. In light of the above, I therefore respectfully request that the council looks favourably on this application. Thank you. Kevin Coogan on behalf of the applicant. Thank you, Ms Lowes. And Councillor Jerome, I think you've indicated you're happy to open the discussion. Thanks, Chair. We know that previous apl applications have suggested demolishing this building, but most people would recognise this building as a great feature and asset to the area, and it would be tragic if it was lost. Um, this application retains this building, brings it back into life as a residential dwelling, and I think significantly retains its character. And, you know, we have to remember that the, the tilted balance applies here. And this will make two dwellings contributing to land supply targets in, in, in a sustainable location um, within an established residential area. I also like the fact that they're keeping um, a garden space, 180 square metres garden space, so it's compliant with PG1. Um, and I also like some of the design features. I, I think they're, they're being true to the, the original materials. Um, I'm pleased that wooden frame windows are being used. Um, and they're also using matching slate. 
So I think the feel of the building will be uh, kept cosmetic, cosmetically. Um, and we're also following the recommendations of the BAT survey, which is uh, fantastic. Um, and I, I do accept some of the arguments against. I mean, there will be some harm uh, caused to the street scene, um, which I think is outlined in the report. But I think overall, um, I'm, I'm in favour of um, supporting offer, officer recommendation here, and I'm, I'm happy to propose it. So thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And um, Councillor Proctor. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I um, very much agree with what uh, Councillor Jeremy just said, actually. Um, it's in my ward, so I've got a kind of a bit of, uh, increased interest in, the, in this application. And it is a very um, ex attractive exterior building, and I wouldn't want anything to be done to, to that which would cause a detrimental effect. And looking at the plans, I think they're really, really good, and I don't think they're going to uh, have a have a detrimental effect at all. Um, I think it's very very going to be done very tastefully, and I think uh, it's going to retain its historical form. And um, they've obviously you going to be using good good materials, which will help in terms of that retaining of character. So I think they've come up with some really really good plans, and I'm quite reassured by what Mr. Coogan was saying. Previously, you know, I, I did have some concerns that it might not be done in a way which would enhance Cheshire House, but I think that's that's re reassured me quite considerably. Will it have some harm on the uh, church, church Road Street scene? Yes, but that's quite quite limited and it's not going to be significant. And I think overall, the benefits of this are going to be much much greater than the the negative aspects. Um, so on balance, I, I'm going to be supporting the officer recommendation to agree. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the fight finished product will be in the future. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'll also be um, supporting the officer's re recommendation to, to, to grant. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it is a beautiful building of, it, of its time and um, having having previously authorised the the article article four direction so the house couldn't be demolished um, you know I do think I do think we have a responsibility to ensure that 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 uh, that, that heritage asset yeah, gets preserved so that's not to say we should just approve any application to to develop it but um, it, you know, the longer the building stands empty, the more dilapidated it will get, and and then effectively, we you know we're not preserving the asset. So I, th I think I think this this proposal, the development that's proposed, is 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 quite good. It, it preserves the building. Um, the development does cause some harm to the to the heritage of that of that building. Um, for for me, looking at the elevations, it, it's mainly the it's mainly the, the first floor extension over the over sort of what was the billiard room smoking room um you know I, I accept it's it's got to be developed really in in that sort of a way um and uh, but the render just doesn't doesn't look quite right um but you know uh, i know there's comments in the report that um they couldn't find um you know matching bricks etc so I, th I think that's i think that's okay i think i think the new front door doesn't look too bad actually i think that blends in quite well so i think you know there is some harm there i think it's it's minor negligible harm and the benefits of the of the scheme in particular the, the benefit of of preserving the asset uh, as a heritage asset i i think you know out, outweigh that negligible harm and um yeah i mean i was also struck by what mr coogan said actually that it hadn't been used as a house for 80 years and um and also what he said about the current state of the of the building, uh, which has been empty for a while, I think. So, you know, this is a good proposal because it 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 develops the property and preserves it as two new dwellings. Whereas I feel if a if a commercial use um, was was secured for the building, then that's probably less likely to to preserve the, the heritage um, of, of of the building. So, yeah, I'm broadly supportive. Uh, I think I think the um, the report. Um, strikes the right balance. I think the benefits do clearly outweigh any harm to, to the heritage assets. So I'll be voting uh, in favour of the uh, officer recommendation, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Winstanley. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, continuing with, continuing with themes, so I'll 
try and be brief. I, I love Church Road. I love the way it looks now. And if I could set in Aspic, I'd do that, but we can't. And um, this development strikes a, um, I think, strikes a, a really sympathetic balance between the house, uh, the houses that exist now, and a modern take on the house. Um, and I read with great interest the the kind of materials which would be used in the redevelopment. They're going to be extremely sympathetic to the existing structure. And I think will um, I don't think they will actually damage the aspect of Church Road. I, th I think they'll add to it. So very much in favour of this development. So I'll be voting in line with officer recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Winstonby. Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, the old Keys House School is quite a um, well-known building down Church Road. And I visited the site, I had a look at it, and I can't see where, well, although there will be negligible and heritage impact, I, I certainly believe, as with uh, Councillor Stanley just now, that this remodelling, renewing of the property can only be a benefit to Church Road. So I will be supporting the uh, recommendation to Grant. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minister, I think you indicated that you had a question you'd like to ask. Um, yes, thank you. It's about really like the matching. I get, I get that obviously the building's not been in use for for a number of years, and I'm really, um, I like the idea of bringing it back into use. I like the idea of having sympathetic sort of restoration and a bit of conversion done so that it can actually be used and to brought into housing in a, in already a residential area. My my question is really about the um, the trying to match. Um, materials and obviously this is, as, as, um, as, uh, as has been commented on in, in report about the rendering and things is there a reason why we can't match I know it may not match the exact uh, materials obviously because it's an old building but in terms of colour and things like that and sort of what it, in appearance why we can't match it that's that was my question um <laughs> It's difficult to find a precise match for historic bricks um, because it isn't just the materials; it's also the weathering. Um, so they don't they don't necessarily weather in the in the same way. So you can get reclaimed bricks, but if they've been on a different elevation, then they will have weathered differently. Sometimes it is better not to. And if you try and match very good bricks, very good historic bricks with a modern brick, it is more obtrusive than using a different. Uh, traditional material and, and render rough cast render is a is a traditional arts and craft material thank you um councillor morgan thank you chair i'm probably going to go a slightly different tone than probably a lot of the other members of the committee um i do understand some of the comments um on this and i like I have, I have concerns. I think it's a beautiful building and like uh, Councillor Wynne Stanley said, on a beautiful street. Um, but, and I think there's then the big but, which is do those concerns mean to oppose an application which then potentially puts the building at risk? Um, and I do think I look at this and I think the render I have concerns about. I do think I think the applicant has done as good a job as I think an excellent job, but I do still think it's not going to look symmetrical in terms of as, as, a, as splitting it into two houses. Um, and it has got a significant mass, but then I have, I, I mean, I've, I then compared it to the rest of the street scene. I mean, its next door neighbour has simply gone back. The nursery has gone back a long way. Um, the house is actually very different in terms of, it's a, it's a stunning house, but it's it isn't. It, it, we're not looking at a set of symmetrical houses here. It is quite different in terms of its design. Um, and the extension, the first floor extension, does does definitely just stand out. You you would definitely know it is an extension. It doesn't fit in. Um, but I do think they tried. Um, I think I think as much as you could do, um, the the building just is never going to look like that if you do it. It's end up beyond doing nothing to it. <laughs> Um, and it's really, I and mean, like uh, we said on lots of these applications tonight, it's a balancing act, isn't it? Um, and I, I do think when the next door neighbour is supporting it, um, and then the comment is it would be a loss of privacy, well, they're the most affected. Um, there's a substantial plot behind it in terms of a garden. So I think I've really, I've swayed on this when reading the report o over the last few days, and I've, I have listened to the comments, and I think, I will be voting in favour of it. And I don't think, 
I, I think it's a balance argument. And I think the balance of preserving this building and allowing it to be a, a family a set of family homes, I think is worth the, 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 the loss of the fact that it is not going to look the same as what it did in time. But heritage assets do have to move on as well as, and, and we can't stop the clock. Um, so um, yeah, I'll be supporting the officer recommendations tonight. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. I think the application has been proposed by Councillor Jerome, but I'm not certain that anyone seconded it as I'll yet. I'll second, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. I, I think there's been a pretty good discussion about this now. So we move to the vote. I'll just ask, uh, as I've done previously, cycle through as it appears on screen now. Councillor Jerome, can you confirm your vote, please? Yeah, I'm happy to support officer recommendation. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Thomas. Happy to support, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Winstanley. Uh, in line with recommendation, officer's recommendation to grants, please, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minnis. I'm happy to support re officer recommendation to grant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Proctor. Happy to support, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Happy to support officer recommendation to, to grant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morgan. Happy to approve in line with officer recommendations, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rigby. Vote approval. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cordingly. Briefly left the room, Chair, so excluded. Okay. Um, I can see Councillor Dr. Barkley on the call as well. I'm wondering uh, whether she was present for the whole discussion. Uh, thank you, Chair. No, I'll, I'll not vote on this one, please. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Dr. Bowley. I think that's 10 voting for and two determining that they're not going to be voting but, uh, uh, with that, with the application. It's also my vote. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Holden. It's all right. <laughs> it won't make any difference. I, have, I will vote to support the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Holden. Um, so 11 in favour with none against um, that, that application is approved. Um, the next application for consideration is Victoria Warehouse Trafford Wharf Road, which is in page 19 of the committee report. That should be an introduction, I think, from Mr. Pearson. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, if you could just bear with me a second, um, I'll share my screen. Hope everybody can see that. Uh, just before I, I start the introduction to, to this item, um, members will be aware that we had received an objection from the developer of the uh, residential scheme known as number one Trafford, just across the road from this site. Pleased to report that that objection has now been withdrawn on account of us having addressed the various issues that they were concerned about, mainly noise related. Um, those issues have been addressed by condition um, and as you understand it the agent was the speaker against the application has, has chosen not to um, so um, so my, my introduction uh, you can see the site there um, edged uh, yellow usually um, on, on the site plan it sits close to United's ground but I'm sure members will be familiar with the warehouses the significant structures um, this application seeks permission for a suite of works um, to the, the, the complex, which currently hosts an event centre and, and a 42 bedroom hotel. The site benefits from um, an extant planning permission to implement a 775 bedroom hotel within the two warehouses on site in conjunction with the existing arena and events uses. Um, whilst that permission has been implemented, there are only around 40 of the hotel bedrooms have actually been developed to date largely because the nature of the use on site has changed over the years. Um, so the application proposes a mix of, of new development, um, together with the change of use and refurbishment of, of some of the buildings on site. So just so you can get your, your whereabouts, the football grounds over here. This is the um, one of the main warehouses where the hotel currently sits. That's, so that's known as the Eastern Warehouse in, in your report. This is the Western warehouse, the blue one. 
the uh, the lilac coloured building is the relatively low rise event centre. That's where, where the concerts and most of the conferences take place. And the the sort of amber coloured building here is the proposed car park. Um, so that hopefully gives you an idea of where things are. I appreciate that's quite difficult to see. Um, it, it's such a large uh, site; it's difficult to get the whole thing, um, whole thing on site. But again, here, that's the existing warehouse. That's the one that has the hotel in it at the moment. So on the left, as you look at it from uh, from the road, uh, this is the um, Western Warehouse. There's the event centre, current one, on that. Uh, sort of amber coloured um, uh, extension there. That's the new roof, which sits on top of the existing, and that's the multi story car park. Um, this drawing at the bottom shows the uh, site as it is now. So you can see the car park fits in that slot where the current surface car park is, and, and the new roof going over, over the uh, buildings there. So, um, so as I say, the, the, the development comprises the direction of this seven storey uh, car park which will be clad in core 10 which um, is uh, quite a trendy sort of rusty metal uh, uh, has a rusty metal appearance and it's shown there so we sense that this will be uh, really quite a suitable uh, material and you know for for, for that building um, it also includes the 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 um, alteration of the uh, Eastern Warehouse, as I mentioned before, so that's this one down here. So instead of the 775 rooms across both buildings, there will be just 200 high quality guest rooms in, in that part of the building. Office space is proposed on the second and third floors in, in this office building here. Um, and then I've, I've mentioned the roof uh, over the existing uh, event centre, a new clubhouse and running track on top of this roof for ancillary to the use of of the site um, and then an extension on the roof to the eastern warehouse um, which provides uh, sort of more entertainment the proposal includes the uh, a number of other works to the buildings um, but most of those are relatively ancillary there are lifts introduced at various places to improve accessibility and a, and a glazed entrance unit here to, to, to this building. So I'll just finish off going through these slides so you can see how it will sit there with the residential development at number one, Old Trafford, once that's complete. And there's a few more detailed images. I showed that one a minute ago. So that shows how the height of this building will complement, I think, the existing warehouse. There's a, there's a bridge link there from the car park at high level as well as obviously a link at, at ground floor. And there we've got a view from, from the front of the site. And, and again, you can see how the car park will relate to the existing warehouse. And then just a couple more. There's the uh, Western warehouse. Uh, so you can see the glazed entrance here and you can see one of the lift shafts here, glazed lift shaft. And then I think I've just got one more slide shows you the view it's essentially the canal view actually it was taken from the road but you can see how the, the new buildings sit in the context of the existing ones so officers consider the principle of the development to be acceptable complies with the development plan which identifies the site as being within the wolf side strategic location that's identified as a major mixed use area of regional and international significance where there'll be a focus on opportunities for new economic leisure and residential developments. The industrial aesthetic design approach is considered to be appropriate in keeping with the existing development, including the use of the core 10. Um, buildings on site are considered to be non-designated heritage assets. And although the proposed works on to the site will result in what we consider to be minor, minor adverse impact to the architectural and historic, historic significance of the group, it's considered that the benefits of the scheme in terms of securing and improving the existing buildings on the site, these buildings were at one point proposed to be demolished uh, a number of years back. I have to say that's not the case now. Uh, benefits to the local economy, tourism industry, and significant employment benefits, which you will have seen from the report, 
all of those are considered to outweigh this minor heritage harm. In terms of noise, the proposed new roof to the arena, which will sit over the top of the existing roof, will seek to improve the acoustic performance of the structure, reduce noise impacts to its neighbours. The condition is recommended to ensure that noise egress from the arena is no worse than existing reality. We expect it to be considerably better. Concern had been raised, as I mentioned earlier, by the developer of the number one Old Trafford site, principally over noise issues, but those concerns have been overcome, that objection has been withdrawn. Um, you'll see in the additional information report in paragraph six to nine, further consideration has been given to the traffic impacts of the uses. Uh, and in response to concerns raised by the Highway Authority in relation to events traffic management, condition 28 of the additional information report requires an event traffic management plan. Now that will ensure that pedestrian and vehicular traffic to events at the warehouse will be managed appropriately. An additional condition is also recommended to secure an off-site parking strategy whilst construction works take place in the period before the car park is made available for use. Um, it is, as we said, though, it's the, the, the recent opening of the Metrolink line and the nearby Wharfside stop transforms the accessibility of the site from, from its previous uh, uh, position. So the development's considered to be acceptable and is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Sterling. I'll take the screen down. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. I understand the objection has now been withdrawn, so we just have um, one person speaking in favour of the application is the Mr. Cohen here. Yes. Hello. Hi, Mr. Cohen. Um, you have three minutes to speak, and if you run over, I'll just politely request that you wrap up your remarks. Thank you. And um, thank you very much, Chair, for allowing me to speak on behalf of Victoria Warehouse. Victoria Warehouse is a group of three warehouses built by the Liverpool Warehousing Company in the early 20th century. When purchased in 2010, it seemed destined for demolition. They were best described as being robust, muscular buildings of massive scale that had fallen into disrepair. My endeavours since then have been to restore these historic buildings and provide a meaningful role that secures their long-term future. Victoria Warehouse began with music by design. This gave Victoria Warehouse relevant credibility with a targeted demographic that once established would attract a corporate market that wanted to be associated with the image directly or indirectly. The approach enabled the growth of the variety of events shown in the additional information report with all the local, national and international benefits that come with having this facility. The proposal is the opportunity to enhance and preserve these historic buildings on this very important gateway site. The proposal has been extensively refined in its pre-application journey, taking the advice and guidance from traffic planners and heritage architects. All aspects of the design have been carefully considered to enable a functional future role whilst restoring historic features. There will be major employment opportunities moving forward with this application. Presently, some 282 people are employed at the partially developed Victoria Warehouse. It's expected that the high quality hotel and conference events operation will employ 885 people. In addition, the proposed office space can accommodate 600 people. Recent exhibition and conference events have included government departments and agencies, KPMG, Barclays, HSBC, UPA, AstraZeneca, BMW, JD Sports, and many more. Victoria Warehouse was built to store and process a wide variety of goods shipped from around the world down the Manchester Ship Canal to Salford Quays. The cargo was unloaded onto the Trafford Park railway system and delivered to the building. The merchandise was then repackaged and put on the Bridgewater Canal barges for transportation to London and then on to Europe. The unique group of buildings are assessed as non-designated heritage assets and are of historic interest. To conclude, I want to emphasize that this proposal is an opportunity for Victoria Warehouse buildings to find a long-term role that preserves and refurbishes their historic features, enhances a gateway into Trafford 
expands upon the international reputation and will deliver real economic benefits. Moreover, the proposal saves this historic landmark property for future generations to appreciate the heritage and how such operations worked in the early 20th century. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Um, Councillor, accordingly, you've indicated you're opening the discussion. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Mr. Curran and I go back uh, 10 years or so, I think, since I first cycled up to Albert Square to have a look at uh, his building there. Um, th this is a journey that I, I, I'm just really so appreciative of. Uh, it, Victoria Warehouse is a real asset to Gorse Hill Ward. Um, I'm delighted that the hotel expansion is taking place. I think the planners have done a brilliant job, as has Mr. Curran and his architects. Um, one of the things I'm really pleased about, uh, which makes it so timely, is it, staking out the, 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 the mixed use of the uh, wharf side uh, with the cultural and tourism offer. We've got a lot of pressure for new build houses and new build apartments along the front, and they, we want those to continue. But I don't want to give the wrong impression that we're abandoning the um, tourism and the cultural side of things. It has to be a proper mixed use, and that is going to be, create that buzz. So the wharf side should have a buzz. And um, Mr. Curran and the Victoria Warehouse team have, have really produced that, and I'm really supportive. And uh, I, I propose acceptance. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Chair. There's not really a lot I can add to that because Mike's just said first what I was going to say. This is an excellent building with an excellent uh, company in situ and, in my opinion, an excellent design to take it forward and into the future. And I'm more than happy to second the uh, approval of this. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morgan. Thank you, Chair. Um, I can agree wholeheartedly with the two predecessor um, speakers. Um, I, I mean, I, I actually, the one concern was I couldn't quite visualise the, the car park. So I'd just like to thank Mr. Pearson for putting those images up because that's really, really just helped clarify for myself. I, I mean, this is a stunning building, absolutely stunning building. I should probably um, slightly note that this was a competition for um, where we we're going to get married so uh, it's absolutely gorgeous building um, and I would like hate for Trafford to um, anything to happen to it and the, the fact that we considered demolishing it a few years ago is is, is a horrific thought um, um, really really is um, and yeah I'm absolutely happy to um, um, support the officer recommendations. Thank you Councillor. Uh, Councillor McBee. I think you're on mute there, Councillor, sorry. I do beg your pardon. Yes, it's, it's a, an ambitious application and an exciting development. Um, the hotel will certainly benefit from the upgrade. Um, as has been said, it stands at the gateway to the borough. Um, we've seen um, warehouses developed in other parts of the country for Albert's, Albert Dock at Liverpool. And um, I look, look forward to supporting this application, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, happy to support the the officer recommendation as well. It's um, you know these these buildings are a real are a real landmark. Uh, they're real landmark buildings uh, and have been for some time. I can remember. I remember as a lad walking past them, stepping over the railway sleepers on the Trafford Park Railway to get to Old Trafford, and uh, and looking up at these huge monolithic buildings probably the biggest building i'd ever seen at that time um so that you know they, they are landmark buildings and uh but probably not that easy to to convert and into a modern use and i, and I think this scheme does that well uh it will have uh, a lot less impact than the um the, the previous application for 775 rooms um the car park building i think i think looks good i think it blends in well to the heritage of the buildings um, so this is a really good opportunity. I think it's a really good scheme to to preserve these historic buildings. Um, I'd support the recommendation. The only uh, slight reservation I have really was around the um, the number of EV charging points in the in the car park. So I think it's 193 space car park and 16. I think it's 16 EV spaces proposed. I know the condition. Um, 
I think the condition number 15, I think, yeah, sort of asks for details to be submitted and approved, which which might cover it. But I, but I think, you know, given the direction we're heading, um, it should be possible to, to have, a, you know, at least 10%, if not more of those spaces having uh, EV charging points. So provided that can be accommodated within what's proposed at condition 15, then I'd be happy. Alternatively, I suppose we can make that condition more explicit about the... Um, the proportion that have to be EV. But uh, aside from that, Chair, I'm very supportive of the scheme, so uh, happy to uh, support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I don't, Mr. Pearson, I don't know if it's possible for you to just comment on that issue with the uh, proportion of parking spaces that would have the EV charging points on them. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, as you say, I mean, electric vehicle charging points, there's going to be greater demand for them as time goes on. And, and at the moment, we are we're tending to put the type, the wording of the condition on as we have done to allow for. I suppose it's at the point at which it's uh, discharged. The condition is discharged. We will be taking account of the latest sort of government and and, and other guidelines from um, from the sort of the air pollution uh, uh, people to to decide what the appropriate amount is, but. I mean, it might be that Mr. Cohen is happy to provide more than the number that are suggested currently in the scheme, um, but that we feel that's the, the most appropriate way of dealing with it at, at the moment. Okay. Um, I suppose are you satisfied, Councillor Hartley? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. I, that makes sense, actually. That um, you know, yeah. obviously, this development might might take some time to do, and and I think if um, you know, leaving the condition sort of open, uh, it gives more scope to. You know, to be up to date in in terms of the proportion that 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 should be um, EV charging points. So yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. Thanks for the explanation to uh, Mr. Pearson. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, what what struck me as well is that you know there's a healthy provision of uh, bike storage as well uh, contained in the application, which was really pleasing to see. Um, I, similarly to other members, I feel really enthusiastic about this application. I think. This is a part of Trafford that's really quite unique. You know, it speaks to our, uh, a small bit of our industrial heritage and really development and redevelopment of that area has, in my opinion, been quite long overdue. So it's nice to see um, the applications and developments coming forward that enhance the area, but they do so with a sort of respect and a nod to that in industrial heritage. Now, the, this application has been proposed and seconded and I, I, I'm personally of the view that we can move on to the vote now. So I'll put it out to members. Um, Councillor Jerome, can you confirm your vote for us? Yeah, I'm happy to support officer recommendation to grant. Oh, thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Thomas. Happy to support, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wynne Stanley. Uh, hugely in favour of officer recommendation to grant, please, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minnis. Thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm in favour of um, going with, with the officer's recommendation to grant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Proctor. Yeah, really good plans. So really happy to support. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Happy to support officer recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bigby. Happy to support, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Caldingley. Support, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morgan. Happy support in line with officer recommendations, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Holden. More than happy to support the granting. Thank you, Councillor. And Councillor Dr. Barclay. Happy to support officer recommendation to grant. Okay. Uh, I will also be voting uh, in line with officer recommendation to approve, uh, and I make that unanimous now. Thank you all. Um, the next application on the agenda for determining is 60 Broad Road, and that's page 177 of the committee report pack. Um, there will be an officer introduction from Ms Milner, I think. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Just... So the next application for members relates to 60 Broad Road, um, a large semi-detached property on the corner of Broad Road and Wally Avenue in a residential area of sale. The application proposes the demolition of the existing garage. 
which is here, flat roof garage, and the erection of a single storey home office building, um, which although attached to the rear of the property is accessed through the basement or through the garden. Um, objections have been received from three surrounding um, properties, including the adjoining property, um, number 62, um, with concerns over the scale of the um, office and the design, and also concerns that the home office will actually be used as a commercial premises, which would have an impact on noise and disturbance and comings and goings to the site. Um, these objections are supported by Councillor Burriton in his call in to committee. Whilst officers do accept that it is a large addition to the property in terms of depth and doesn't comply strictly with SBD4 in terms of that depth, it's considered given that the eaves would match the height of the existing brick boundary wall and would have a very shallow pitch um, on the roof, that the impact on number 62 would be acceptable and would not lead to a harmful impact on their amenity in terms of it being overbearing or resulting in a harmful loss of light or overshadowing. Um, equally, um, this is for a home office um, ancillary to the main dwelling. An application for a commercial dwelling would be a separate planning permission um, and we are satisfied that a home office um, in this location is acceptable and therefore subject to the conditions in the officer report recommend approval. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Milner. Um, I understand there's two people speaking against so Mr. Marland and Councillor Brotherton. Um, you had any agreement between yourselves as to who'd like to speak first? No, let the resident go first, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Mr. Marland, are you, are you with us? Uh, Chair, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Mr. Marlon, thank you. Um, you'll have three minutes to speak, and uh, if, if you do uh, overstep a little bit, I'll just politely request you to wrap up. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Uh, there are two uh, primary issues relating to the proposed development at 60 Broad Road, namely compliance with the pr principle set out in SBD4 and a commercial premises within a residential area. Trafford's own supplementary planning document, SBD4, gives clear guidance on what is acceptable for de designing house extensions and alterations. It is by following these guidelines that ensures that any development does not breach the council's inherent duty to safeguard the amenity of neighbouring properties and to protect the character and appearance of individual properties and residential areas as a whole. The doc this document is in place to protect everyone in Trafford and not just those who are prepared to openly object. In theory, there should be no need for this statement to be written if the simple guidance within SPD4 was followed and in force. SPD4 is clear that a single storey rear extender should not extend more than three metres from the rear of the house. The planning officer's report for committee notes the proposed extension has been 11 metres. However, in reality, it's 11.5 metres to the edge of the roof leaves on the gable end. I repeat, 11.5 metres versus three metres. Para 13 of the report makes the comment, in these specific circumstances, the development is considered to be acceptable. Acceptable to whom? And if there are any specific circumstances, then surely they would feature in SBD4. No case is made in the report as to why such a significant derogation from the council's own policy should be made. SBD4 is quite clear as to how an 11.5 metre long extension could be accommodated. This is by increasing the spacing between the boundary and the extension. For each additional metre of spacing, the permitted extension can increase by a length equivalent to an equivalent amount. However, in this application, the gutters of the extension are right up against the boundary line. There is no spacing. This therefore caps the extension length as per SPD4 guidelines to three metres. Typically, a home office for two adults would normally require 20 square metres of space without any need to duplicate all normal home facilities. However, in this case, the proposal is totally self-contained with, with a separate kitchen, WC, external entrance doors, and with, and with an internal area of 64 square meters to provide capacity of up to six people. It is not ancillary at all to the main dwelling. For context, the proposed building is the equivalent to, to a typical two bedroom apartment. The proposed development is not designed or scaled as a home office. It is a commercial office for a successful wine business to be constructed in the garden of the proprietor's home. 60 Broad Road is located within a high quality residential area. There are no other commercial buildings within half a kilometre and as such these proposals would normally require planning application for change of use. If such an application were submitted it's highly unlikely that such an application would ever be approved. Planning officer's observations point two acknowledge the building is to be a home office. 
and not a commercial facility, and takes reliance on the applicant as to its current and future use. It is incumbent upon the planning com committee to ensure that a planning application reflects the correct use classification. In this case, the scale and how the building only links to the basement of the main house should tell the committee that it's not a typical home office at all, but a commercial office unit. There is no relevant precedent that would suggest accommodating this application would be appropriate, and more importantly, what the community benefit would be for allowing such a substantial boundary tight and awkward appendage to be built, and the unintended consequences of such an action. We respectfully look to the committee to reject this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Marlon. Thanks for uh, your, your comments. Uh, Councillor Buzzleton, uh, you have five minutes to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I don't think I'll need five minutes after Mr. Marlon's explained all the, the objections. Uh, first of all, perhaps I'd make, better make it clear that I'm not a member of the planning committee. I'm just sitting here as a, as a ward councillor. Uh, having said that, Chair, I, I do uh, acknowledge that the applicant has made some changes since the original application was submitted some months ago. But nevertheless, I, I do support Mr Marlon's view that this uh, proposal, the design of the extension is completely out of character in a, a very residential area. If members have visited, you'll know most of the houses around there are large Victorian or Edwardian properties. And this, I must say, rather uh, utilitarian extension doesn't fit in with, with those at all. Mr. Marlon has mentioned about SBD4. Uh, the the councillors or the officers' own report say that this is the 11 metres is vastly in excess of the limits applied by SPD4. And it's not just marginal, it's, it's well in excess. And I think that alone should be enough to refuse the application. Um, the final point is I'm still concerned about the office. Uh, I know it's done as a home office. I'm not quite sure how you define that. But to me, it, it's particularly because it's got an external door, an external access, it looks like a commercial office. And I don't think if, if this was granted, how would the council monitor what the office, how the office was used and what it was used for? In practical terms, we just haven't got the staff to be doing that. And to me, I, I'm afraid I have to believe that this is, this office is intended for commercial use because that's what it looks like. It's designed like that. It's not an integral part of the house. It's There is access from the house, but also access from outside. I have a home, home, home office. I suspect most people on here do, but it's not external to the house and separate from the house. So, so Chair, I, I do hope the committee can understand the objection of Mr. Marlon and his neighbours and uh, refuse this application. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Thanks. Um, I believe there's Catherine Ludlam uh, with us as well to speak in favour of the application. Good evening, Chair and members. I am Kath Ludlam, a Chartered Town Planner and Conservation Consultant. I'm speaking on behalf of the applicants, Mr. and Mrs. Gray, and in support of the officer's recommendation to approve. My clients have lived at 60 Broad Road since 1992 and have worked from home since 1999, using the basement as an office. The nature of their business is a specialist high-end vintage wine suppliers to prestigious clients in the UK and abroad. This is an online business and customers do not visit the site Stock is not held on site, it is held in bonded warehouses elsewhere, and there is a minimal number of deliveries by standard carriers. There are three family members working and no other staff are employed. The business has operated this, at this level for the past 21 years with no complaints from any source regarding traffic, parking, noise or disturbance. The proposed home office will remain as an ancillary residential use and this is not a commercial proposal. It will provide a healthier working environment with improved sunlight, daylight and space for this family. Such working from home is a sustainable practice which is actively encouraged by the government, both local and nationally. The proposal retains the three existing car spaces at the weir and provides a new turning facility, so there is no longer any need to reverse onto Wally Avenue as at present. There will be no additional occupiers, vehicle movements, parking requirements or deliveries above the existing. The proposal is sited on the footprint of the existing garage and hard standing with no loss of green space and is well screened by a mature holly hedge and boundary brick walls. 
It extends further than the length of the garage by 4.5 metres and is 1.5 metres higher at the ridge, increasing the footprint by 35 square metres, just 6% site coverage, which is modest in relation to the large sized plot and the house itself. The design has been amended as requested by the planners to be reduced in size and is architecturally sympathetic to the existing Victorian dwelling. In terms of the impact on neighbouring properties, it should be noted that both of which have been considerably extended and as the photographs indicate, not sympathetically. Number 62 Broad Road. The proposal projects 4.5 metres further along the common boundaries than the existing garage and the eaves are level with the lowest part of the existing boundary wall. The ridge is four metres high between 2.5 metres and four metres from the common boundary. The only visible element from 62 Broad Road would be the receding shallow pitched roof plane. This would not result in a visual impact or be overbearing. Although exceeding the guideline figure in SPD4, it complies that in that it does not adversely affect amenity, as advised in the committee report. Number five, Worley Avenue. The proposal is five metres from the common boundary and 10 metres from the side elevation, with an intervening two metre high brick boundary wall, and is sited due north of number nine and has no windows in the gable elevation. The recommendation is to approve this application and members are respectfully requested to follow the officer's clear advice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Ludlum. Um, I don't think I can see anyone as having indicated in the chat that they'd like to open the discussion. Are any members um, looking to contribute here? Hmm. I can know. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I appreciate the remarks that have been made by Mr. Marlin, Councillor Butterton, and Ms. Ludlam, I have to say, because I, I found myself agreeing with both uh, contributions that we've, well, all contributions that we've received there tonight. I think Ms. Ludlam highlighted that, you know, the plot that uh, the application with the development would sit in, it is actually quite sizable. Um, and I do think that it's possible for that plot to accommodate an extension or a, a, a home office. Um, however, I think in Councillor Butterton's contribution and in Mr. Marlin's contribution, they both seemed uh, quite um, strongly of the view that actually the, the non-compliance with SPD4 in terms of the extent of the extension, um, it, it's not just a marginal breach, that their view seemed to be that it's actually quite a significant breach. And I don't know, Ms. Milner, if you had any sort of um, reflection on the, that grounds of their objection. Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, SPD4 is, is our, our guidance and, and we do use that to, to guide um, all decisions regarding house extensions. And generally, we, we do stick to that guidance quite strictly, but the guidance is there to be taken alongside material planning considerations and material planning considerations include the existing conditions on site. The existing conditions on site are that there is a 2.3 metre high brick wall along the boundary with 62 Broad Road and therefore if the eaves of the extension do not go above that height we have to ask ourselves what is the harm on the what is the impact and what is the harm to the amenity of the uh, adjacent um, occupiers um, SPD therefore is not to be um, purely um, imposed um, without considering those material considerations and um, also you'll see from the um, the plans that the, the design of the property has an asymmetrical roof and um, which means that the eaves are much lower on, well they are lower on the side with the adjoining property and because of the roof slope there is quite a distance between the eaves and the ridge height which again takes the height away from that shared common boundary and as such we don't feel that it would have an overbearing impact um, harmful above the existing situation on site uh, where therefore we're quite confident whilst it doesn't strictly comply with or doesn't comply with SBD4 there are material considerations that dictate otherwise. Thank you, Ms. Warner. Thank you for sort of clarifying that. Um, Councillor Corden, you've indicated it's a bit. 
Uh, thanks, Chair. I I'm happy to propose uh, accepting the officer's recommendation after hearing that. Um, it, it is an unusual plot. Um, I doubt if this extension would fit in many houses uh, within Trafford. That, that site is particularly unusual. And on that basis, I do think that we can introduce flexibilities to... It does fit. Basically, the, the, the extension does fit. And I'm happy to accept that. And I, I do take the view that the officers have treated this objectively. And um, I, I'm happy to uh, propose acceptance of that. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'm thinking of a similar mind as, as Councillor accordingly. It, it's a difficult one because, because the the size of the extension you know, is, is well in excess of the of the distances in 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 SPD four. I think um, I think I think the advice we had from Miss Miller was really helpful. Actually, about you know those are guidelines. They they they're not sort of uh, fixed distances, and we do see applications where those those distances are are exceeded. So I I think you need to look at the the development in in context at the site. So uh, although it does exceed by a long way those those distances in SPD four. I, I agree with council accordingly. I think that it that it does fit into the site. It is an unusual site because it's a corner plot and also very very deep. So it, you, you've got a very long side elevation, um, and also the nature of the property with high boundary walls as is. So although you, when I first looked at it, I thought, well, this is way too long. It's way in excess of the guidelines. Um, but actually, having having been to the site and looked at the elevations, the the, the impact on the on the street scene and, and I think the impact on on amenity is 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 minimal actually. So um, I I'd also be happy to uh, support the officer recommendation to to grant the chair. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Jerome. Thanks, Another very hard decision as previous councillors have stated. I think SPD 4 3.2 does allow each case to be considered individually, if I think I'm right. Um, and it does allow us to look at the specific nature of the locality and existing buildings to be taken into account. Um, uh, I don't know if that's just for corner plots or whether it, it includes this plot also. But if you do look at some of the objections, I, I do tend to agree with officers as other councillors have, have stated. I, I don't think there's any overbearance. Um, there's no issues with parking. Um, and I don't think there are any, I think the office use, I think a lot of people are going to be alter, altering their houses to work from home. As we know, um, society is changing because of COVID-19 and more people will be looking to work at home and, and kind of alter their homes in this type of way. So though it is a very difficult one, um, I probably will be uh, siding with Councillor accordingly and, and Councillor Hartley on this one. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Rigby. Thanks, Chair. Um, and thanks again to Ms Milner for her explanation on SPD4. It, um, it was really helpful. The only, I mean, I appreciate the representation that's been made you know everybody likes to um, defend their property but the only other the, the other issue which had been raised was the, the the sort of threat as it were of it being made into a commercial office where we can't make decisions at planning on what may happen to a building we've got to make decisions surely on what has been applied for and what is it being used for um, but no, I've, I've been swung entirely, and I'll be agreeing with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Rigby. Um, I can't see anyone else as having indicated that they'd like to um, speak. If I'm wrong, please do so now. No, the application has been proposed by Councillor accordingly, but I don't think it's been seconded by any member yet. Second it, if you wish. Thank you, Councillor Whitby. Okay, we'll move to the vote then. Um, and as previously, I'll just go round my screen. Um, Councillor Jerome, how are you voting, please? Yeah, I'll be supporting also recommendation. 
recommendation to grant. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Thomas. Happy to support the recommendations, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wynne Stanley. Uh, thanks, Chair. Happy to um, uh, support officer's recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minnis. Happy to support the rec officer's recommendation. Thank you to grant. Thank you, Councillor Proctor. Support officer recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Support officer recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Bigby. Happy to support the officer's recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Corum Bingley. Uh, so support, support, officer's <laughs> recommendation to grant. Yes, <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Morgan. Support in line with officer recommendations, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Holden. Support the recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor and Councillor Dr. Barclay. Support officer recommendation to grant. And I shall also be voting to support officer recommendation to grant and, and make that a unanimous decision of committee that application is approved. Um, I think we're out of time in terms of being able to proceed to any more of the applications on the agenda. Um, I'm not sure if Democratic Services can confirm that. Yeah. Um, they're not chairman but yes we are out of time <laughs> <laughs> we, we we can't we can't take any any more items this evening yeah but um applicants who were waiting um i understand will be contacted about a deferred meeting next week yes i think i think we can we, we can confirm that that will be the same time the same date next week thursday the 17th we will confirm the time of that meeting for you uh, can, I just soon... say, can i just say that clashes with a licensing panel which i'm chair of so i, I won't be able to attend both clearly would you be happy submitting a written statement to be read I out i already have yeah I, yeah I already have to michelle so i'm happy for that to be read out right that, that's uh, i will chair yeah, sorry right. i'll be on the same meeting i'm on the licensing uh subcommittee um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll communicate to members and to the applicants what, what the arrangements is, will be. I was, yeah, okay. I was going to ask, is there any chance it can be later than four o'clock? Okay. Sh 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 we'll, go, we we'll discuss it after, yeah. So, sh shall we, Chairman, close the meeting and then agree yes. the time with, with the members present? That, that's yeah. great, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah.